Uh, I invited uh -huh. him tomorrow. Got it? No. Aaron? Uh, yeah. George? Yeah, let's hip and hop. Let's hip and hop it. Press the recording button. So, intrepid adventurers, welcome back to session eight, I believe, of the Serrated Empire. Last session was an interesting one. Um, we began with a party split in twain. Lorcor and Sin had plummeted through the mists in the chasm and ended up sitting in a bath with an exiled Sari, surrounded by some other exiled Sari, all looking very naked and very surprised that you're there. It led to a blood bath, ha ha ha, um, as Lorcor proceeded to rip apart everyone and Sin did her very best to remain unattacked and just let the douchebag outside drive past with his loud car. Um, unattacked, unhurt, as she watched Lorcor butcher the exiled sorry in front of you. Um, there were some sketchy moments, but you played it well using your strengths uh, to thrive and survive. You then took a bit of a rest uh, in the little pool as Tiberius, Slug, and Car Wren um, resigned themselves to their companion's fate. There were some token throwing of various objects into the mists, cooling out, but really, what could they do? And so they headed further into the ruins, exploring, discovering some strange circular rooms, other geometric patterns. You seem to get the sense of a, a large circular ring around some central tunnels. Um, with mists um, in some of those circular rooms. Eventually you headed inwards and found a room full of light, bright light with other tunnels moving off from it. Um, you decided to explore the spiral staircase you found there, heading up, heading down, peeking around some corners, and eventually came upon your lost companions. Sin and Lorcor, after a period of rest and Sin's meditations on a couple of objects that she found, and and, and crying angel statuette and a curious salve, um, you had also found the same spiral staircase and come across a group of exiled Sari led by a shady looking uh, lizard folk exiled Sari called Tora the Poisoner who proclaimed that he would, or they would take the head of the large lizard folk that had been causing such grievous damage to their people. You fought hard, you fought well, but eventually, and you took down Tora, lying dead and broken on the floor. But unfortunately, the exiled Sari were just too many. It's particularly two extra ambushers jumped out from some concealed rooms. Haren died in the fighting, being cut down by the the spear of an exiled Sari. Uh, Sin fled, assessed the situation and fled the situation, focused on survival, um, back downstairs, whereby she took some moments to collect herself, but was eventually hunted down and surrendered unharmed. Uh, the rest of you were not killed. You were bludgeoned down, knocked out, and dragged down into a room that some of you had seen before, but a much smaller room within the larger chamber locked and your only companion a giant crab currently sitting with its beady little eyes watching the rest of you um a particular member of the exiled sorry had come into the room after maybe a few hours um spoken in sorry understood by sin questioning why you'd killed so many of um their people but um Sin said because they discussed uh, the rest of you were kind of too out of it uh, to engage you are all now awake you have, have been left in this room Lorcor has tried a, a potential breaking of the doors, nothing really seemed to work the crab sits in the corner and also copied Lorcor's action at one point um, but you find yourselves here your stats are as they are. Uh, Slug, George, I'm sorry you returned to Slug in such a sorry state. I did my best to, to pilot him. You got off a pretty sweet grease spell um, in the fight, but it was not to be. God's sake. 
I did my best to look after you, but I fucked it. <laughs> <laughs> so, weapons have been confiscated. Um, anything, any items that could possibly be conceived as aggressive or helping you escape have been taken. Um, but otherwise, you are as you are. Sat in this small room. Table covered in bits and bobs. Some gathered flowers and pots. Broken boxes um, with a giant crab crouched on top of them. How do what um, do you do? Yeah. How does spell casting work with? Um... So it, it has the same stuff it five uh, uh, e does with the somatic material um, and verbal. I think spells that are just verbal are quite rare. I know shield is one, um, but you do not need a focus or anything to cast a spell that is only somatic and verbal. The focus is there if you need material components. Okay. So as I assume I have a focus then that's been confiscated. Yes, it would be. They are aware of magic. Mm. Yeah, you find yourself sat in this room. Have we rested or not? Yeah. You have not rested yet. There had been a few hours long enough for the, the people, those of you bludgeoned to regain consciousness. Um, but you have not had a long rest yet, no. Okay. It's good to know. Uh, how do we do... I can't remember if we need a healer's kit for healing. Do we? To do treat wounds, you do need a healer's kit, yes. Okay. So somebody's got one. Somebody's got my one. Where is it? Well, I see yep. they've taken it. <laughs> they have not taken your healer's kit. They've taken anything that could be constituted as aggressive or um, might aid you in some form of escape attempt. Okay. So if you had like a crowbar or anything, that would have been taken. Weapons have been taken. Tiberius's bow um, been taken. But no, a healer's kit would remain with you if you wish to try and treat wounds. Yes. Um, I'll why is there two of me keep appearing? Oh, no. Yeah, it did that for um, me as well, because duplication bug. It's done it again for me. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Keep spawning. Um, um, uh, can we heal ourselves? Yeah, you can treat wounds on yourself. Let's try it. Let's do it. Medicine check, uh, please. Medicine. Seventeen. Seventeen is a pass. Roll two d eight. On which one? <laughs> hey, okay, all right. And you oh, remove oh, oh. your wounded condition. Um. You get regain nine HP across those ten minutes, and if you wish to, you can extend it to an hour of time, and you'll double the healing, so it'll go up to eighteen. Yeah, let's stop on it. So, have I got one HP currently? You got one HP currently. Okay. Anybody else? Well, I'm full HP, so I'm not really sure about yeah. that. Yeah, I'm just. And you are sitting there, whole. Just trying to look at some oh. other stuff. <laughs> what the fuck? Go away. Really weird. Maybe refresh the. Map to oh, like okay. go. Let me just delete you completely. Yeah, Pull me too. Out. Let's do that for me. Do we? Yeah, Lorcor, you see, scraping his wounds back together using the healing kit in a instinctual capacity. Perhaps even like licking some of the wounds. Oh yeah. Um. Just sort but, of. Yeah. Holding something <laughs> against it, basically. <laughs> but. Time is, is passing. You are sat. Do you speak to each other? Do you engage with the crab? Do you do anything at all? Mm. I've already tried bashing on the doors, haven't I? You try bashing on the door, the doors seem particularly resilient, <clears throat> and in contrast to how you've seen these doors before, where they've been kind of translucent with bubbles inside, the green glass here is opaque and seems a lot more mm. solid in this form. Local. I was just going to stand by the door. Which door did they come out of before? Or into? The one to your north. Uh, yeah, stand by that door. 
when someone comes in, he's going to grab him. Okay. Anything from anybody else? I'm currently just waiting. Yeah, any treat wounds attempts for Tiberius or Slug? Are you asking someone else to treat your wounds, or are you just moping just in your own? Feeling sorry for himself. Yeah, feeling sorry for yourself. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think Lord was especially angry. He didn't get the kill on that poisoner guy, and he's annoyed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you go and stand by the door, Lorco, the giant crab sideways scuttles and stands opposite on the other side mm -hmm. of the door to you. Okay. Little claws. What's the deal with this crab? What's he doing? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> so I'm just going to walk up to the crab. Yeah, as you walk up to the crab, it kind of turns slightly and looks up at you. Or looks pretty much eye to eye with you, Slug. This is a giant crab. Oi, crab, what are you doing here? <laughs> the crab's eyes, stalks or whatever they are, kind of twitch slightly to the side. Its little mouth bits shift around, clacks its claws. Doesn't seem aggressive at all. Seems it's now its attention is on you, Slug. Um, but it doesn't respond. You're an odd crab, you are. <laughs> Slug's going to give him a glowing seed that he has. Oh, okay. Ooh. You hand over the glowing seed. The crab kind of looks at it, its little eyes kind of bend forward. And then it it reaches its mouth parts down, takes up the, the glowing seed. You feel the scuttly feeling on your hand as the mouth parts kind of pull it in. Crunches down the glowing seed. You see there's like a a little wiggle. The crab gives it a little wiggle. Perhaps it's it enjoyed the glowing seed. And it kind of clacks its, its claws. Um happily and, and shuffles to the side of you, Slug. Greedy little crab. <laughs> How tall is this crab? The crab is probably a good, like, four, four and a half feet tall. You can't ride the crab, Slug. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can try and ride the crab if you like. I don't want to ride no crab. <laughs> Know, it would make a funny visual. Um, do more, more healing? Yeah, if people want to. The hour has passed, no one's come in through the door. More healing. You've got one healer's kit between you, so you kind of do need to take turns. Has if... it got unlimited uses? I can't remember. Yeah, I think it has unlimited uses. But you're okay. using it during that hour. Yeah, let's do it again. Oh. Are you healing? Fourteen. Fourteen's a failure. It's not a crit failure, so no harm is done to anyone. But yeah. um, no success there. That is ten minutes. Ten minutes can pass. You can give it another go. Nothing to is stop you. Else? Time ticks by. See Tiberius slumped on the floor. Looking very sorry for himself. You see Sin in her perpetual oh. cross-legged meditation. That's not a crit failure either, so you're okay. That is a failure. Slug's gonna sit uh, sit by the wall and start uh, badly playing his harmonica. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't have taken a harmonica from you. <laughs> you hear the sultry tones of Slug's harmonica, giving you the full prison vibe. <laughs> yeah, um, Tiberius would start humming along, like snapping his fingers to the harmonica. Yeah. The crab seems to copy Tiberius, sits down next to you, Slug, and like clacks its claw on the ground in time with Tiberius clicking his fingers. Mm. No one else is doing any medicine? I'm going to do another one. Yeah. Yeah. Another 2d8 for yourself. I don't want to fail and knock myself out. Oh, 16. Yeah. I was about to say you can extend it to an hour if you like, but... Uh, you, I mean, you can if you want, but 16 already um, most of the way to full health. 
I mean, there's nothing else happening. Make it full health, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Lorcor with a a hunter's resilience and willpower doesn't seem bowed by your situation, and with a a, a single-minded determination, continues to bind his wounds, make the best of of what's happened. Straps himself up with a number of bandages. Yeah. Sort of yeah. like blends into the wall a bit with his um, scale thing. Very nice. Um, yeah. The tone of your scales shifts to match the grey of the stone. Yes. Yeah, you can put yourself to full health. The hour passes. The intermittent songs on the harmonica, perhaps some requests. Um, as the hour comes to a close. Oh my god, it's the duplication again. <laughs> so fucking Maybe move the map back and forward, Tom. Like, uh, let's put you up and then back. Hopefully, that's okay. Um, Slug, you notice as you get towards, and you notice because the crab sat right next to you. As you get towards the the end of this, oh my god, nope, it just immediately happened again. Lord when, is I think it's when I change stuff. Cloning maybe. himself. So weird. Um, Maybe Tom didn't save the tokens properly, so when Hannah's changing stuff that is trying to update a new token, like did you did you save the token to the sheet properly, Tom? I think so. You maybe maybe you, you have to way. click on the token and update default token and all that shit. Yeah, I did the update no. default token. Thing. Change something again. See if it did. Yep, it's when I changed stuff. All right, yep. let's remove the default token. Yeah. And click use selected token. <coughs> Save. Try updating something now. No. Uh. Mine, yeah, mine did it. <laughs> Still did it. I saved a new token. That's super weird. Does it do it for Tiberius? Probably not. No. It must be something to do with the new ones. Um... Yeah. yeah. We'll see That's if it bad. happens um, on the next map when we get there. Um, yeah. As we get to the end of the hour, Slug, you notice as um, the the little crab next, well, not the little crab, the big crab next to you has clacked his claws against the ground during your harmonica playing and such. One of the, his like left pincer has come to rest next to your leg as you're sitting on the ground. And you notice that out kind of like between the plates of the shell where the pincer like the the shell of the crab turns into the two parts of the pincer there seems to be what looks like a small plant growing out of that space like the beginnings of a vine or a thorn um a thorny plant slowly crawling out of that space wait out of where out of kind of the if you imagine boy, my amazing drawing skills if you imagine it's got its pince a bit here and pince a bit here the this plant weird like plant bit is growing out of the gap between the the main plate and the pincer and like growing back onto the plate itself not huge. Only Slug notices it right now because it's right next to the the crab. But it is weird, Slug. It is weird. I don't know what to make of that. Yeah. Can I touch it? You touch the plant. Touch the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. As you reach down and kind of poke the plant, the crab shudders. Um, across its whole body, you hear the clacking of its feet against the, the tiles on the, the ground, and it scuttles slightly away from you back onto the um, the broken boxes and, and so forth. As it does so, you see the plant seemingly in response to your touch begin to accelerate its growth, and you hear the sound of straining um, chitinous exoskeleton of the crab as many different vines and thorns begin to break out of different joints on the crab's body um, and in the space of maybe 30 seconds the crab undergoes a transformation during this time it's kind of shuddering and shaking 
and you see instead this is it a mushroom crab is it henry mush crab <laughs> hey everybody <laughs> no um not mushrooms but uh thorny briar and brambles have broken out through the various joints on the crab's body and covered its shell and pincers um the crab now d the same size or similar size to before hangs much lower to the ground its body is like barely off the ground at all um and the crab legs seem to constantly be in movement as if it's like constantly repositioning itself on the ground um it moves in a very different way to how it did before instead of the kind of odd side scuttling it walks forward its Ooh. crab legs taking it forward um towards you and it kind of it takes kinda... up a space um in between many of you with sin still on the other side of the table and from between its kind of clacking mouthpieces um you hear a deep rumbling voice that just says seemingly addressing all three of you thank you for freeing my essence little man as it's one of its claws like flops on the ground towards you slug as if gesturing towards you it turns go on slug if you're going to say something i don't know i was just going to say i'm sorry crap <laughs> The crab slowly turns, again, this strange, kind of very smooth motion towards you. And it, it just looked, addresses you directly, Slug, kind of as it lollops its big claw out onto the ground and then slowly turns to face where it's pointing and just says, um, I must repay you for your kindness. Oh, okay. Can I see if I know what this creature is? Yeah. Crab. What is, what is your <laughs> nature? Um, it's really a crab. <laughs> um, it's a plus seven. Oh my god. The doubles. Uh, a plus seven. Yeah, Sin, this is very strange. You've seen in your time things being uh, changed in form. You've seen um, experiments done with different creatures. Um, I, I'll say... The, the knowledge you gain in, in this moment is less about your learning and your um, intellect and more a gut instinct. You do not like what's happening um, with this crab. This like eruption of natural elements, the briar and the bramble. You feel like deep in your gut this, this like pickling of, of fear and revulsion at what's happening with this creature. But you, you do not recognize it as something you've seen before. That's not good. Um, mm -hmm. Continues to address you, Slug, and just says, I can release you from this foolish place, but you must promise me something. Yeah, what? Such a kind young soul deserves to sit on a throne worthy of him far above and the other claw of the crab kind of hangs up limply towards as if pointing towards the ceiling on the highest floor that remains in this fallen tower is a throne of glass young master Take up your throne. Promise me you will do this, and I will release you from this place. Tiberius would be like, do it, um, do it, Slug. I don't know how else we're going to get out of here, and that sounds really cool. <laughs> I think a glass throne would suit me, actually, yeah. <laughs> the crab? leans forward as if something inside it is trying to get out forward towards you 
the mouthpieces kind of writhe and clack uncomfortably in the crab's body as it its mouth opens up and from within the mouth a third as in it's covered in fur hand extends out from the mouth towards you cool. amongst the fur <laughs> on this hand and forearm is um a wrapping of vines and brambles and thorns and leaves dark deep red flowers even bloom and then disappear back and there as the mouth opens in this horrible hand emerges there is a deep smell that fills the room of musty swamp and uh, stale water as the hand reaches out towards you and you hear the voice saying Take my hand, and it is done. Yeah, I'll take the hand, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the small no, hand no, of no. Slug reaches out <laughs> and is clasped within this big, um, paw hand, paw-like hand. Um, and as you clasp it, Slug, there is uh, an electric kind of buzz through your body, and you feel a deep sense of of meaning for however that might feel to a 13 year old um and as you do so the hand quickly retreats like a tongue coming back inside a mouth inside and the crab again walking forward turns towards tiberius scuttles forward towards you mm -hmm. scuttles past down to this door on the far side, past the double sin, and extends out one of its claws, taps three times, knock, 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 on the glass, and you see the glass begin to vibrate and hum. There's a high-pitched sound in the room, and then the glass just shatters down onto the ground, and the door is destroyed. Yes. Cool. Cool, cool. Thanks, Slug and Crab. <laughs> <laughs> the Crab oh, moves backwards. <laughs> well, I could have done that if I had your claws. There we go. I'm going to sniff out. Well, not sniff, but you know. Look up at the starry. Yeah, as, as you look outside, you see there is a, a lack of anybody around. You see some other chambers nearby with a similar setup, this triangular shape. Mm. But it, it seems empty right now. You don't hear the sound of anybody. Is our stuff anywhere? Slug, as you... I'll come to that. Slug, as you pass the, the crab, it gently holds your forearm in mm. one of its pincers, and you see what see the... What the the, the thorns and the vines kind of curl around your forearm for a second and you hear the voice um, from it once more and it just says head straight to the throne and place yourself upon it where even is the throne now? the other claw, the other points, claw up points up again the top of the tower head up the spiral stairs you can't miss it mm. Mm. Sin's just gonna stare at the crab yeah and Sin you okay. being the last <laughs> I'm so stupid you being the last in the room you notice that as soon as Slug leaves past the threshold of the door the the vines and thorns begin to constrict on the body of the crab and you hear the sound in fact everyone would hear this because it's loud of cracking shell as the vines and thorns pull inwards constricting the body crunching and cracking it down and you hear a faint kind of crustacean squealing sound as its body is crushed down into a mass of um vegetation and shards of shell upon the floor and a heavy waft of that swampy stale water smell spills out into the room and you can see 
uh, the vegetation is decomposing in front of you. Ugh. Yep. Would Sin be familiar with uh, Kiachio called Lone Growth by any chance? You'd certainly be familiar with Lone Growth, yeah. Um, with Lone Growth, though um, decomposition um, is a part of Lone Growth's kind of domain, there is always a focus on kind of regrowth and the returning of minerals to the soil and, and so on. Um, this feels... Fuck's sake, internet. on you I lacked out Didn't no worries what you said sorry that's okay um it does not feel like the touch of loam growth um it feels like it's your bright blue light turn the intensity down again um it feels almost like a perversion of the Kiad Shores abilities loam growths um, connection to decomposition is always to do with like returning minerals to the soil, the cycle of life, regrowth. Um, this doesn't feel like that. This feels like a stagnant kind of decay. Things decomposing down to nothing to kind of just stay there. There's a stillness to it that does not feel like a natural Kiad Shore element. She's just gonna, without uh, in like stare down at it with that thought and out of earshot just sort of say what are you no response so is it just a big wet clump of shell meat now Currently, Sin being the one that can see it, um, what Sin can see is, yeah, all manner of like vines and vegetation covering maybe a, a, a six, seven foot square. Mm. It's it's spreading, but not in a way that it looks like it's, you know, rapidly covering everything. It's more just almost taking on like a liquid form and just like a puddle mm. spreading across the ground of this thick, stagnant water that smells of swamp and decay. Yep. This Sorry. Just gonna open that door. Would this count as an animal? Um, no. That I mean, there's some remains of crab shell left, but there's there's nothing living. There's no real animal there. There's vegetation remains of crab. There's something in here. Yeah. So Tiberius, as you open the door, <laughs> uh, the door works just as so many have done for you. You place a hand on it, and the the green glass uh, retreats from your touch. Inside, you see a few things. There are some exotic-looking creatures. Um, lizards, uh, one s large snake, um, have taken up residence um, here. Again, you think of Sari and their trapping. They exiled Sari and their trapping of uh, creatures. Perhaps these are their, their prizes. The lizard on the table crackles with electricity across its back. But you notice um, that both creatures just kind of look at you with dull eyes and just even without needing to check um, particularly you can see that each of their um, well for the lizard it's four limbs touching the table 
are bound by thorns and vines to the table, and the snake on the ground has thick vines wrapping around its kind of lower half or back half, um, again binding it to the ground. The creatures just look at you. Their, their eyes follow you, and they just kind of sit there in a docile manner. Tiberius had just uh, closed the door, and he'd look up at local, like, well, it doesn't look like they're going anywhere. Could be a fairly easy dinner for you if you're feeling particularly hungry, Loco. It must be a few hours since you ate. <laughs> it has been a while. And I will Can say you? that <laughs> that Tiberius yeah. would have spotted as well um, that um, your goods, all of your goods, do seem to be on the table. Oh, okay. Yeah, Loco just sort of nods, and kind of agrees. But they don't usually spark with He's just gonna go up to it and try and shove it on the floor. <laughs> uh as you um go to move it, Tiberius, the lizard hisses at you. Um but you do notice that you can move it and the, the vines almost kinda like shift along with it as if um like seeing the back of a, a sea serpent breaking a wave, the vines move through the table um, and continue to, to bind the lizard. He looks down at it. it. He's like, "You're not the biggest lizard in here, lizard." <laughs> and then he looks at Loco. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Loco is not paying attention. He's just looking at the snake over here. Yeah, um, big big snake. Is it within reach? Can I just grab it? Yeah. You place a hand on it, it, it offers no resistance. Yeah, just like, squish it, kill it, stab it with some claws, you know? Yeah, it is defenseless. You you find it easy to to kill, um, and the, the lifeblood of the snake drips out onto the ground. Mm. Does it smell? The snake itself? No. Um, and as you kill it, the moment where you kill it, and you can feel that as a as a proficient hunter, Lorcor, the the vines retreat into the ground and leave no mark from where they've gone. Mm, okay. Yep. Yeah, sucks it up like a noodle. Uh, um... <laughs> yeah. Completely fair. <laughs> uh, could get the other one. Yes. This one. In fact, what what is your nature? In fact, it's, this isn't going to be an HD. I'm just going to roll for this. See if you've seen it. No. So yeah, this is a new creature to you, Lorcor. It crackles mm. with electricity, and as you reach towards it, kind of like a static shock, a little spark jumps up to your claw and zaps mm. you as you reach near to it. Hmm. Undeterred. Just grabs it. <laughs> yeah. The the electricity crackles across your hands. You get like that strong pins and needles feeling in in your your hands, but it's not enough to hurt you, and you can easily kill it and and eat it if you wish. Yeah, down the gullet. Down the gullet. Baited for now. Yeah. Tiberius is going to find his little notepad <laughs> that's mm -hmm. in his belongings, and he's going to name those two creatures which he's never seen before. <laughs> Fantastic. He's going to call one a noodle snake. <laughs> <laughs> A fry lizard. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I've written that down as well. Sin's yeah. gonna um whilst this is happening. Yeah. It's gonna reach her hand down into the the decaying mass. Mm hmm And just sort of grab it. Yeah, you get a handful of very kind of slimy, sloppy vegetation with a couple of hard shards of um, crab shell in there as well. It it feels cold, feels like cold swamp water, gritty, thick with various material elements in the water itself. She's just gonna hold it in her hand. Yeah. Can um, Tiberius try and heal himself now that he's not trapped in the room? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You can take ten minutes. Try and heal yourself if you like. Yeah, while he's getting his gear back on. Oh, fuck. Okay. So, this is where I remind everyone they have a hero point for this session, because that would be a critical failure, and you would take damage. Oh, I better use it then. 
Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so, as Tiberius is pulling his stuff back on, he takes your healer's kit, Lorcor, as you kind of, it's kind of a group healer kit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he, how <laughs> does this even fucking happen? He, like, tries to pull a bandage out, and it's <laughs> it's caught on something inside the kit, and he's like, pulling and then you hear the sound of ripping as the bandage rips and his own fist just clonks into his face <laughs> and he knocks himself out <laughs> unconscious on the ground Lord just looks over to Sin and looks down to Tiberius on the floor <laughs> she also looks down at him <laughs> <laughs> Lord just picked up his stuff <laughs> he is dying currently <laughs> Is anyone doing anything as Tiberius is dying? He's dying too, as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stabilize, stabilize. Slug cast. Stabilize. Uh, Tiberius now is wounded too. And dying, not dying at all. I'm pretty dumb, mate. <laughs> Just unconscious. <laughs> yeah. The the rules for for consciousness in Pathfinder with it wasn't uh, applicable before because I don't think Sin wanted to, but you can wake someone up from being unconscious. You like shake them awake. So if you want to wake Tiberius up, you can. He'll be back on one. He'll be back on one. Well, <laughs> it's up to you guys. You can just leave him here. Might be safer to have him like this. <laughs> Good point. No, I'll, I'll shake him awake, shake him awake. Yeah, you shake him awake, Tiberius. You can clearly really open your eyes. Your right eye socket really fucking hurts now, much like the rest of your body. Um, and you remember the moment of clocking yourself. Does anyone slightly more experienced want to help me <laughs> heal myself? I mean, no one's directly asked sin. <laughs> No one's asked. Yeah, Lorcor just pulls out a bandage, looks at Tiberius, like, do you want it? He wants it. Send a walk up and try and heal him. Hey, medicine check, please. Well, Tiberius would be like, step on you. at least you're good for something else other than running away, Sin. <laughs> <laughs> He says that as you're stepping up, then. Yeah. Wow. So do you just take the the barb on the chin and heal him? Hmm. That would be a crit. Well, my character, character token just teleported away. Um, <laughs> which was weird. Um, what should you do? Oh my god, what the hell? Would you heal Slug instead? I bet that's probably what you do, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Actually, I think <laughs> yeah. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Roll forty-eight, please, with your critical healing. So Tiberius, you watch as Sin just calmly diverts her attentions to Slug instead, um, and with expert skill, patches him up, bandages wrapped Uh-oh. tightly in place, um, bruises uh, well, salve. You know, as Sin moves over. Yeah, Lord Quarl steps up, you know. He's coming in. Oh, he's going to heal Tiberius. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, Lord Quarl, you just, can't do... Full of bandages. <laughs> you can't do a worse job than me in Sin, who can't even be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm good at healing. Um, and he just grabs, like, a fist full of bandages and just, like, covers your wound, like, just, like, a fist eh, on it. <laughs> I imagine um, him like doing the bandage, but he's like just stem a like slightly bleeding wound, and he just ties it really hard. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Usually uh, he does it on himself, so it's pretty strong. Tiberius, you find yourself with tight wrappings around your body. You feel like a, a strung ham, um, but you are not healed <laughs> for, the, for the the time spent. As you see, Slug looking very happy and much healthier next to you. Cool. Ten minutes has passed. Feel. Feel better. 
Morally speaking. <laughs> Good. Let's go. <laughs> Tiberius is just gonna fucking crawl on the floor behind him. <laughs> Look open the door. The sorry sight of Tiberius Quivershank crawling along the floor behind Lord Thor. <laughs> Lord Thor is going if no one's gonna be like, no. Yeah, yeah. You're heading off. You see a third triangular chamber. With the doors again looking unlocked. Let's go to this door. So. Could, uh, wait, whilst that's happening. Yeah. Can Sin try and inspect Slug to see if there's anything different about him after he touched that thing? And I also want to um, read Aura spell. Ooh. Or detect magic if it's more appropriate. I don't mind. Oh, illusion. Okay. Um, you definitely detect magic, sin, and it feels powerful. Um, you receive no information beyond the presence or absence of magic. Yeah. And then read aura. Seems to be for an item rather than a person. Yeah, that's fine. So yeah, you get you, you get a sh you. I will say you get a strong sense of magic um, on Slug that definitely wasn't there before. Can I do like a visual inspection to see if I notice yeah, something absolutely. visually different? No, I no, never mind. I teleported back. <laughs> <laughs> um, the fuck? That's Sin, such a weird glitch. It's really fucking weird. Um, Sin, you, yeah. I will say this is in combination with the time you spent bandaging Slug up and he was kind of at your mercy. You were looking for um, any signs of wounds and at some point... Oh my god, what the fuck? It's just Lorcor's spawning in the other room. Um, <laughs> you kind of pull apart, uh, look at the roots of... It literally just appeared again. <laughs> you're totally doing this, Anna. Um, I changed something so much. <laughs> you're, you're looking between Slug's hair, checking for injuries, and you would see that down amongst his big fuzzy mane, um, there are little shoots of plant life, like a like a hair follicle or a, a, a new hair growing. There's like a tiny little almost like looks like a little watercress shoot sticking out of Slug's scalp. Um, That's horrible. Four or five different little shoots you notice across um, his scalp. Um, the rest of him, you can't see anything different. Um, you think, though you're not sure, the lighting's difficult down here and you haven't spent that much time around these people. You think there might be a slight discoloration to his skin? A kind of greeny brown hint but it is subtle and faint um, but the, the most obvious change is those little shoots. okay I'm going to keep that information to myself okay Lorcor as you yeah. open this door mm. right in front of you you see a gigantic skunk um, okay. skunk big bushy tail the black and white distinctive coloration it's currently flopped down, kind of half curled up, like how cats often sleep, curled to the side with its tail around its face. Um, and as you open the door, it like cracks one eye open and looks at you. Doesn't seem to be bound to the floor or anything like that at all. Um, it looks at you, and you're quite an intimidating sight. Um, and some of like its hackles start to stand up a little bit, um, and it its other eye opens and it looks like it's kind of starting to pull itself up a bit. Mm. What do you do? Lorco shuts the door. He doesn't want to get skunk smell on him. Gross. <laughs> okay. You <laughs> shut the door. The sight of the skunk is lost to you. Even a creature make us smell. <laughs> yeah. You've seen gigantic skunks out in the jungle before, Lorco. Tiberius is just going to sit by this pillar. He's going to be like, come get me when you find the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I 
actually no. He's gonna go in this room. <laughs> yeah, you With see the, the skunk. gigantic skunk. It seems a lot less <laughs> perturbed by the <laughs> Tiberius crawling inside than the gigantic form of Lorco. Yeah, he just slumps down in the corner. Yeah. You lie down in this space, Tiberius, and you hear the the sound of heavy breathing from the giant skunk nearby. <laughs> he's just going to try and sleep until someone comes get it, to get him. <laughs> he's too hurt to bother. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> They're walking around. Yep, yep. Lorco kind of assumes that this is the door to the skunk, but he's going to open it anyway. Yep, you look inside, you peek around the corner, you see the skunk, and you see yep. Tiberius lying down on the ground next to the skunk. <laughs> Is there anything behind the skunk in this corner or anything? This, this chamber looks the least uh, used of all of them. There are some broken barrels. Um, two of the barrels do look intact, and there's bundles of tied um, wood on the table, um, but really nothing else apart from that. Need no tied wood. Yeah, totally fair. Um, and there's just the, 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 the just the door up here. Yeah. Sin's gonna there's... go to slug. Mhm. Mm and it's going to say, if we want any hope. Of making it out of here, I suggest we rest before climbing. Lug, do you respond? Lug, do you respond? Well, I think we should go upstairs. Very well. What sort of time is it now? We've been here for a while. Yeah, your your sense of time has kind of been knocked out by you being knocked out. Um, mm. It feels... You're not sure. There's no daylight filtering through or anything to go by. You do feel tired. You've had a long day of exploring and, and bits and pieces. But um, you're not sure. Yeah. You certainly feel like you could rest if you wanted to. That's what you're getting a sense of. Mm. Sin's gonna step away from Slug and go to Tiberius. Yeah, you find him with the skunk. I've got no Which you think by the has way. moved slightly towards Tiberius. I've got no light vision, by the way. Oh, I can give you. I assume the light uh, cantrip doesn't have any. I always said produce flame anyway, but I assume it doesn't have a material component. Oh, I've got, a cantrip. I, I changed it to the light one more. Oh, okay. Bing, have we got our sorry? We've got our stuff back. You have all your stuff. All yeah. stuff? Your character okay. sheets are now accurate. Cool. I'm gonna go heal Tiberius. Okay. Yeah. Ten minutes definitely passed. Tiberius, the door opens and light floods in. The skunk, which had been edging closer to you, actually shifts oh, back to where it was stop before. Teleporting. Um, oh. I don't know what it's doing. And now but I've, I've lost the light again. <laughs> So it is like it's pulling out a new token each time. So fucking weird. But yeah, medicine check, please, if you wouldn't mind. No oh, hero point. Hero point spent. 20 is a success. 2d8. And if you wish to extend it to an hour, you can double the healing. Yeah. Lorca is waiting by the door, I would say. I won't double so the healing, but I will, as I'm healing Tiberius, I will say to him that your companions are planning to push on full hardy, full hardily. Um, if you wish to survive this Tiberius Quivershank, then we should rest. Did I lag out? No, no, you're good. No, no. no. Kieran, are you there? Has he gone to make tea? Has he thought everyone was taken off without him? Roll 20, pissing me off today. So weird. 
Yeah, how how keen are a lawcore slash slug to get moving? We can come back to uh, Sin speaking with Tiberius, but what's is lawcore just waiting there? Lawcore's waiting. Um, he's just waiting to see what everyone else wants to do because he's not that he's not that bothered. You know, he's not, he's not in a big rush, but yeah. you know, he's happy to kill some stuff at any time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he, he'll wait. Slugs on the wants to wait. <laughs> Slugs on the stairs and he's eager to go up them, but he doesn't want to go on his own. Yeah. Cool, cool. Kieran. Damn tea makers. While Kieran's making his tea, I'll take the opportunity to remind you guys of what you've discovered about this place before, because it's been a little while. So, you know this to be a tower with a spiral staircase going up the middle, and there are multiple floors. You're currently on, and you all know this, the bottom floor. So this bottom floor seems to be a storage area where some animals and prisoners are kept. You know that next up... Get my diagram here. Yeah. Next up is the, the chamber with the tunnels branching off. Currently the only exit to this tower that you've seen. Um... Four different tunnels branching off and lots of light in this large kind of display in the middle. Um, next up, you have um, a chamber that I don't think anybody has explored yet, but you heard some gruff voices inside. I'll mark these with some writing in a second. Above that is the chamber where you had, um, where Lorcor and uh, Sin fell into the fountain, so that you know that's uh, a floor with this kind of spa element, as you like to think of it. And also it had that kind of almost religious worshipy kind of room next to it. Above that is the, the room you had your fight in and defeated Tora. And then you know the spiral staircase ends one further floor up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, one's a matter of time. Is that has Kieran returned to us? Yeah. Kiri boy. Sin just said sorry, Sin, what you said. She healed him and while she was healing him, she said that basically your companions are planning to foolhardily push forward and we should rest if you don't want to die. You'd look at her. I think I'll go forward with my companions, thank you. She just looks at him and moves away. Oh how dear. Many, how, many, how, many, how many spells have she got in? I got none. He doesn't know where they are, so he's just going to go, Loco! Uh, slug, where are you? <laughs> Loco's not coming to his name. <laughs> <laughs> Lorcor feels like he's waiting a really long time, 10 minutes. He's yeah. his back against the wall. Right. Since uh, you're, you're planning to push forward, and uh, that's what we've done this whole trip, so I guess that's what we're going to carry on doing, eh? Yeah, feel better. Much better. Well, I mean, <laughs> Lord God can only go by what everyone else is saying as well. Yeah, completely up to you guys. That's what you know of the, the tower currently. So you're currently in the storage room. How tired are we all feeling? Pretty tired. Pretty, pretty damn pretty tired. Pretty tired, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, if Lorcor's feeling tired, he's just going to go sleep. Yeah. Where are I you mean, sleeping? He's, he's probably falling asleep on the wall waiting for you guys, to be honest. <laughs> it's dozed <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Lorcor's asleep. Okay. Anybody else 
doing anything, changing anything? Mm. You plan to just sleep? Or do you want to try and wake Lorca up? No. Guess um... <laughs> um... just try and sleep out here. Is anyone taking watch, or you're just going to sleep? Um, well, I'm asleep already. So. I'm going to return to the room where we were imprisoned and just snuggle there. Yeah. The nasty smell of the puddle still sits on the floor. Um, yeah. Tiberius, slug. Hmm. I'll probably just stay near Lorcor and yeah, probably yeah, probably 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 probably. <laughs> bundle around Lorcor. <laughs> Not and, and... too bundled, but <laughs> a safe bundle distant. Okay, yeah, you you find yourself dozing off, and as you kind of release the quiet of the chamber, you realise just how exhausted you were as as you drift off to sleep. Uh. Lorcor, what is your perception DC, please? So, your perception mm -hmm. um, modifier plus 10. 7, it's 7. 17. Okay. <clears throat> okay. During the night, Lorcor, um, your hunter's instincts kick in. You find your eyes kind of snap open your reptilian irises looking straight at the the glass door as you see the shadowy shape of a figure on the other side of the door you think about to open it mm. okay you have a moment to react do you is there do some it? way to keep these doors shut not that you've seen um mm. the the dwarven woman the the sari that came in and is the only one that speak spoken to you um while you were imprisoned seem to have some way of locking these doors, of turning them opaque, but you don't know it. Can they... Obviously, if I stand up, they can see a shadow of me as well. Potentially, yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. assuming you all extinguished your lights to sleep. Yeah. Well, I'm sure. Oh, well, that was an everlasting light, and I fell asleep, so... Probably yeah. not. If you all fell asleep in the blue light, you, you assume they, they're seeing some light on the other side of the door? And if you stood up, you'd probably be silhouetting yourself. Yeah, local. Is it? Does it look like there's just one silhouette? Yes, from what you can see, it looks like a singular person. Yeah. Then he's gonna get ready to maul them to death immediately. <laughs> okay. The door opens, and on the other side, you do see an exiled Sari, seemingly coming down to check on the room as the door opens the sari kind of blinks blearily um into your light you think it's dark perhaps up where they've come from um mm. and kind of gasps as yeah as the sari sees you so i want to get him before he yells out okay in the head. this is gonna be real simple then everyone else is asleep we're gonna roll initiative just you and the sari yeah roll initiative for me elise Oh. Up to you if you want to use a hero point. Mm. We are an hour in. I'm going to award my first hour's hero point to Slug for awesome roleplay with the crab. Probably. Is. Yay! Probably is. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, this guy physically can't beat you now. <laughs> <laughs> so. As you yeah. go to kind of launch yourself forward, Lorcor, your back claw and your foot slips and skitters across the top of the tile, and you kind of grunt, and the guy thinks he's got you on the, the move, and then just the sheer power of your arms as your claws <laughs> dig into the ground, and you just launch yourself forward like a scaled missile at him, and you just barrel into him. Um, yeah, if you can go ahead and make... You're taking your turn. 
you want to move yeah. and attack, you do your thing. Let's do my thing. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Get in there. I kind of want to get in there. Can I get past him? I'd like to get in his way? Um, no. No? You cannot. Okay. Typically, if you want to go through a person who's blocking a, a space, you have to do the tumble through action, I think it's called. Oh, yeah, toppling. Yeah. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Oh, the only thing is I need to rage to do my jaws. Mm. I'll do two claws. Not as much damage, though. Ricky. Don't have to attack him, you could just try and grab him. Yeah. If you want to cover his mouth, I'll take that into consideration. Might raise the DC a bit. Yeah, let's cover his mouth, I don't want him to yell. And I can just probably kill him next time. Yeah, so you're trying to grapple. Very cool. Yes. So, for that, I believe... Two action, grapple, one action. Attempt an athletics check against the target's fortitude DC. So, okay. athletics, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so, that is... Yeah, uh, with that, you leap forward, barreling into him. You you knock all the wind out of him. So he's he looks like he's like <gasps> about to yell, and you just go <laughs> knock all the wind out of him. Yeah. And you, in, with your muscular form, just wind yourself around him. One arm pinning both his arms to his sides, the other arm clamped around his head, um, his mouth buried in your meaty forearm. Um, he kind of shakes a little bit trying to escape but quickly sees that he is completely fucked he's restrained you critically succeeded and so he nice. is restrained uh, you do have one last action if you want to try and uh, attack him while you're grappling him only takes yeah. one free hand to attack it will be uh, a multiple attack penalty because uh, grappling has the attack rate. yeah let's i can rage next time if i don't yeah do enough damage let's uh let's do a claw attack Cool, cool. Oh, he's restrained as well, mm -hmm. so his AC is lower. Uh, that definitely hits. Five damage. Yeah. yeah. As you're holding him, you just flex your fingers and the claws begin to drag deeply into his flesh and you just hear this <laughs> muffled. <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> you are bleeding him. Uh, yeah. On his turn, he will attempt to escape. I don't think it's okay. going to go particularly well for him, but we'll see how he does. And So your athletics modifier is plus ten. <laughs> so allow me to make some checks for him. This also has the attack trait, so um, if I try and do it multiple times, it has the penalty. Make sure you guys can see this. He will roll. An unarmed attack to escape. Oh! Does meeting it beat it? Because your DC is actually 20. <laughs> Did I lag out again? I did. Cool.
19. Nine, 19. Oh, so minus 5 from 23 is an 18. So he just mm. about fails to shove you. So he scrambles up and as you just like looming after him like the specter of death itself just turns around and you just have these two bloody hands just <laughs> shove against your chest <laughs> and you just stand there and look down at him Lorcor yeah. as it is your turn yeah I'm gonna rage for one yep and I just reach down bite him yep he sees your nostrils flare yep that hits for nine damage he is nice. just about still alive Okay. Bleeding profusely. Uh, start again. Oh. Okay. 17 hits as well, and you finish him okay. off with multiple chomps. He does yelp. He didn't really have time mm. to properly call out, but he does yelp, and you hear the yelp kind of echo slightly up the spiral staircase. Okay. He is very dead. Going to drag the dead body back down yep. with him. Yeah, there is a trail of blood on the <laughs> stairs, but you drag the body back down and through the, the open door. Yeah. As you see your companion sleeping soundly on the ground. <laughs> Loco throws the body to the side. Yeah. <laughs> and sits back down. Very nice. Put the token back out just as a reminder. But he's not going to go to sleep because. Not yet. Not yet, anyway. Yeah. How long do you wait? Probably like... Probably like... An hour. And then he's gonna kick Tiberius and say, hey, watch the door. Okay. So for the remainder of the, the rest, you want to take watches, we'll extend it a little bit. Yeah. Does Tiberius do as he's told? Oh yeah, of course. It's just so cool. Wake up and saw a dead body. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he also sees the dead guy. And he's yeah. like... Uh, look, or when they notice he's probably going to be missing, we should probably get the, get out of here or hide. That's why I said watch the door. Yes, that's a, we probably should have watched the door. I was just so tired, though. And I couldn't no, I, expect I Slug to do it. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I'll, uh... He's going to hide behind this pillar and watch the door from hiding behind the pillar. <laughs> nice. Oh shit, no he can't. The other way around. This, this way here we go, like that. Okay. <laughs> you peer around from the side of the pillar as Lorcor, in his comfortable his blood pool, <laughs> curls up and goes to sleep. Yeah, Tiberius, you, you take your watch and that will carry you through to the, to the end uh, of your long rest. You will have all now taken a long rest. You can do your daily preparations, preparing spells uh, as needed. You regain HP equal, I believe. It was like... Uh, I just have to look this up. It's like con mod. Resting. Character regains hit points equal to their constitution modifier, multiplied by their level. So whatever hey. your con modifier is, multiplied by your level. You gain that many hit points. And yeah, spell, slot <laughs> spell <laughs> slots are restored. Um, yeah, no one, no one seemed to come down to the fuck. Did the map just change for you guys? No. No. Yes, uh, roll twenty is fucking going batshit. Um, yes, your uh, your spell slots are restored. You can prepare different spells should you wish to. Um, no one else came down. The door didn't open again. I think perhaps this guard was sent to do a cursory check um, by sleepy other elements. They assume you're still in your cell. Lul. As you are Lul. ready for a new day. Does anybody wish to heal anybody? <laughs> How much did Ty Bruce heal? Has he done it? I think is is not much of a con modifier, so I think he healed two. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh okay. Um Local Heal. Local Heal. Slug has a con mod of two, so Slug would heal four, going up to twenty three. Thank you, I was slow working. No worries at all. No worries at all. So complicated. Yeah. 
Um, and no, Lopo's not going to heal you because you said you paid him all right. So. Would Sin heal Tiberius? Uh, yeah. Would Tiberius ask Sin for I mean, you? Yeah, it depends if he asks. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. His pride gets the better of him. You find yourself stood here, feeling somewhat rested. With your stuff back, you have access to rations. You're able to eat and drink. Um, mm. Make sure your daily preparations are done. But you, you now stand at the bottom of the staircase. What's the plan? Yeah, Lopo equips its chain back around his chest and there's all this stuff on him. Nice. Gets out the little lantern. Um, just rips a bit of flesh out of this guy, noms it down. <laughs> open that door. Okay, the staircase is presented in front of you. No one on it. Blood everywhere. Blood yeah. everywhere. Yeah, it spirals upwards. The sin around? Yeah, sorry, I'm just doing spell stuff. No worries oh, at all. I'm just wondering if he's. Wait. So, sin is with the group. Should we try and head to the room where we got captured, or. That'd be the last place they'd expect us to go. <laughs> Local. Hmm. Let me just look at this little map thing. Storage, tunnels, question marks, bar. Tunnels. Yeah, so Lawcore and Sin actually haven't explored that one yet, but that's where Tiberius and Slug and Karen, when he was alive, came into the, the tower through. Oh, the okay. only place you currently know for an exit for this tower. Mm. Okay. Uh, I mean, Lawcore's just going to go one, one thing at a time, I think. Okay. What You'd is... be into a... Go um, ahead. I'm just struggling to determine what I need actions this takes. What mm. is the square with, with one thing? I'll just send you it, Tom. Like diamond? Yeah. Uh, a, a, a one diamond is one action. Oh, okay. Um, if, it, if it's like a hollow looking diamond, then it's a free no. action. The spell's only one action, though. That's pretty cool. Didn't know that. Tiberius to try and guide Lorcor if he recognised anywhere. Yeah. So Tiberius, you explain the tunnels as you you reach the next stage. You see this open circular chamber. Uh, I'll move the map over just so you guys can see. You're not necessarily there anymore, but you can see with the the all-seeing eye as well. Um. Mm. Large chamber, golden moats floating around inside this big open area in the middle, and four tunnels branching off from the chamber itself. Oh, fine. He's just going to go up to the... Because he knows the moats heal him, so he's just going to go up and open a door and breathe them all in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you place your hands on the, the green glass and it retreats, and you're able to step inside Tiberius, if you like, or just stand and try and breathe them in. It's as the moats, bad. as the moats hit your body, as you kind of immerse yourself in them, you get much the same sensation as you did um, in the spa, and you are healed back to full HP. Yes. Local. I mean, if he's explained where the tunnels go, he's not. He doesn't want to go backwards, but he's going to just listen out, see if anyone's around else. Yeah, I will say you do begin to hear the sound of like people moving on on upper floors um mm. you just get the sense that um people are waking up and starting their day and will probably realize they have a missing guard soon where am i the guard sleeps in the day you know no one's gonna listen you would be in the in the room as well soon thank you out. hopefully it doesn't do stupid stuff um but yeah if it sounds like there's any like people beyond these tunnels Oh, the tunnels? Um, no. The tunnels kind of mm -hmm. echo out. Big empty tunnels like you've seen before. The, f the frescoes on the walls, the geometric patterns. It's all very familiar now, these ruins. They branch off, and Tiberius tells you that he ha he came in through, I think, this one? The bottom left one? Um, okay. And he mm -hmm. knows from circling it that 
these tunnels, each of these four tunnels connects to an outer ring of tunnel. Yeah. And eventually leads back to the, the rooms, the chambers you were in before, before you tumbled through the mist. Is Slug full health now? If Slug wants to immerse himself in the lights, he will be, yeah. It's up to Slug. Oh yeah, I'd do that. Slug. Big yeah. time. <laughs> See the sight of Tiberius and Slug frolicking in the lights. As they re-emerge, you would notice that unlike in the spa, where the moats kind of dissipate and uh, heal you, and that's the end of it, these kind of free-floating moats without the water around them um, kind of stick around. And as they emerge, both Tiberius and Slug are now glowing with a kind of golden mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. Mechanically, mm -hmm. you both now shed bright light out to 10 feet oh. around you. <laughs> no hiding. Can't yep. Hide <laughs> um, Lord Paul's got to the next floor, then, I think. Okay. Yeah. You head up to the next floor. Um, here you find... Um, uh, well, talking amongst yourselves, you know that this floor actually hasn't been explored by any of you yet. And you do hear voices on the other side of this translucent door. Okay. Do they yeah. sound like sorry? They sound like gruff voices in a language you don't understand, yeah. Yeah. Well, Lorca would very much like to go in and kill everyone, so unless anyone else is doing anything. Um, I don't know. But he just wants to escape at this point, but they haven't found anywhere that looks like a way out. Yeah. yeah. Maybe up the but, stairs? <laughs> Look, or maybe we should just try talking to them. And then if that <clears throat> fails, then we can attack them. It feels like we're never going to get out of here if we just keep throwing ourselves at a wall. And getting recaptured. Maybe we should try and take the initiative for once. <laughs> and then if it all goes wrong, we can just try your way again. Maybe we talk to them, and then we kill them. <laughs> I'll say, once we know the way out, where the way out is, then I'll feel a lot better. And... I know where to escape if everything goes very wrong. Instead of just <laughs> trying to defend myself in a corridor. <laughs> we are better okay. off picking them off one by one. I, do, I mean, I don't really want to kill them. That's the thing. We seem to have just run into it and every time we kill them and then we get cat, they were nice to us to leave us alive. They could have just killed us. Are we talking outside this door right now? Tiberius is getting pretty mean... animated. <laughs> I will say you the voices on the other side of the door don't seem to change at all. And it, standing here for longer, I think especially... Wow, probably Tiberius as well. Sin and Tiberius, you kind of pick up on the fact that the, the voices on the other side, especially Sin with the, the beginning of the understanding of Sari, it sounds like they're doing a performance, like there's the kind of back and forth of a performer and a crowd like responding, and you even hear like some clapping at some points or a cheer. Quite strange while you're ha seeing Lorcor and well, seeing Tiberius having this animated moment of stress. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like you've been noticed and there's, you don't know what's happening on the other side of the door, but it sounds like a performance almost. Okay. Here's an idea. I'll go through the door. If I don't come back, you can attack them and kill them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Tiberius is going through the door. <laughs> yeah. Alright, allow me to move you to this room. He's going to put his weapons away. Okay. Weapons away. Tiberius glowing. <laughs> Ten feet out. I should allow you guys to see. Or just here. Lorcor, you still have your ever burning yep. torch. Tiberius, you're free to open the door. 
step into the room. So, as you step in, you're immediately struck by the arrangement of chairs. Stone chairs carved from the stone of the tower itself are built into the floor. They're not standing on top of it. They are part of the floor um, itself. You... Um, from the other side of the room, as you've opened the door, voices are clearly ringing out, and it sounds like some kind of comedic element. You hear a, a deep, rumbling voice laughing <laughs> and cheering from the other side of a platform. There is a raised platform, like a stage, with multiple step, uh, sets of steps leading up to it, and a, a, a setup that looks, um, from your angle, because you'd be like here-ish, from your angle to be um, quite a like, small stage with frescoes along a, a large stone wall backdrop um, depicting acts of performance, of great oration, people singing or speaking, great speeches, um, theatre, um, great acts, and you see cheering crowds on these frescoes. But the, the voices are coming from the other side of the this um, large wall, this like angled wall. Currently, um, the source of the voices is obscured to you. Mm. Everybody should just walk around with his hands up in the air. Okay. So, you get to there, Tiberius. And these guys would actually have some light in the room themselves anyway. So I'm actually going to turn on day mode for this. You've got to use a different method. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> dynamic lighting, daylight mode. Okay. So, Tiberius, as you kind of curve around to the side, um, you see uh, a very large figure sitting on one of these stone chairs and, in fact, completely, like, overwhelming this chair. The figure is muscular, large, someone of a Goliath ancestry, which you would be familiar with because one of the, the Goliath sailors survived um, on the Quivershank. Um, this guy looks bigger than the person from back in New Quivershank. Um, currently sat in a very relaxed position, wearing scraps of hide um, and animal skins, similar to Sari you've seen before, um, kind of reclining and clapping their hands towards the stage. Sounds like there are some people on the stage, but they're still currently obscured to you. As you reach this point with your hands up, the figure's eyes look over towards you lazily, and a like, slow smile breaks out on the figure's face. Do you say anything? He's like, uh, parlay! Parlay! <laughs> <laughs> the figure smiles, and like, with a a big hand like beckons you over and says something in sari that you don't understand. Stin, with the, the deepness of the voice of this um, exiled sari, you are able to understand. And he's basically just saying, Come here, little man. Okay. Yeah, he just walks up to him. Yeah. Greetings! <laughs> As you head up to him with your hands in the air, you, as you rounded this corner, you're able to see on this ancient stage, two exiled Saria kind of, they look like they've been kind of capering around, slapstick elements, one of them looks a bit bruised, as they seem to have been performing for this large um, figure that dominates the space. The figure, as you get closer, reaches out uh, this large hand and just kind of plops it down casually on your shoulder, Tiberius, in the quite chummy kind of um, element and tries to pull you in closer. Do you resist? No. <laughs> okay. As you're pulled in, the arm is like all the way around your shoulders now and it's just kind of casually kind of hugging you to the side. He gestures languidly up at the, the stage and in a deep rumbling voice says in sorry, like the sorry language spills out. He seems happy to see you sin from the other side of the room. Um, you hear him say, again, your, your understanding is kind of broken of it, but essentially you pick up, he's saying, I've been looking forward to 
getting another performer for my little show. <laughs> um, and Tiberius, you don't understand. He seems friendly. And the hand on your shoulder moves to like the small of your back between your shoulder blades. And with a, a powerful strength, he just kind of pushes you towards the steps to the stage and gestures with his other hand. Um, and Sin, you hear him saying, come on now, show me what you can do. He's getting pushed up towards a set stage. Yeah. What are these guys doing? The two exiled Sari, they, you notice immediately that their eyes are never long away from the larger figure. There's definitely a feeling of authority here. Um, their eyes kind of dart to you, back to him. They look a bit suspicious and unsure, but with his gesture and what he's saying, they kind of bow their heads a bit and move to either side of the steps, um, leaving space for you to step up onto the stage. What were they doing as he came around the corner? As you came around the corner, they were kind of like doing, if you almost imagine, like circus clowns. Like one of them was tumbling, doing a somersault, uh, like knocking the other one over, and the large figure was kind of laughing and clapping. Um, it looks like they've been doing like slapsticky elements for this person. Right. He's gonna. Something that he's been working on for a while. Yep. <laughs> he's gonna do something that's a bit like break dancing okay <laughs> yep so he he takes off his shirt so he's just in his um thi- in his things and he's gonna like try and do a break dance which but at the end he's also gonna do color spray to like oh. really really wow them okay so not trying to have an effect on them the magical element but no color spray for a performative element yeah exactly Amazing. Yeah, well, roll a performance check for me, please. Whilst this is happening. Yeah. Um Sin wants to say to Lorcor They're planning to sacrifice your friend. <laughs> Twenty five. Yeah, and Tiberius is like making mouth sounds as he does it. Like, boom, boom, like, boom, boom, like that while he's doing it and twisting around on the floor. He does that thing. He gets, he does that thing where he like thrusts his groin up when he's, um, like, you know, squatted down and then he does the yeah. color spray. Incredible. <laughs> he's going for something that he doesn't think this guy's seen before. Yes, and it, it seems to work magnificently. The other two, sorry, even back off a bit. They get off the stage, they step down. It's about five foot stepping down. Um, and um, are just watching you. They they seem gobsmacked, whether they're <laughs> unsure or surprised or amazed. You're not sure, but the the big guy, his his crooked smile goes into a big toothy grin, um, and he just shouts up at you. Uh, and even not understanding the language, you can tell it's shouting of encouragement. And he's like waving his arms as if to say more, more. And sin, you can hear that's exactly what he's what he's saying from the other side um yeah, you don't need to roll so... again tiberius but if you want oh, to keep... he would he would uh he'd do some uh loot after that oh fantastic the music begins to play she's just waiting how... to see what law does yeah how far into this does she say, say that the thing when, when i said it, when yeah. you said it. That, that was like as tiberius was beginning his performance yeah say, like, well... a, a little bit into the performance yeah, local barge is in there and he's coming up thick and fast. But Tiberius would be playing the loot. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, the timing gets a bit funny, but I'll say, Lorco, you do hear the sound of loot coming out kind of as you're beginning to round the corner. Mm. Does that change what you're doing? Depends on if um, Tiberius gives me a look with the loot or not. Yeah. Because you... Lorco doesn't know loot equals all right. As you round the corner, Lorcor, there is a tension immediately as the, the Sari kind of look mm. over towards you. You see mm. Tiberius performing on the stage. <laughs> Ty- Tiberius, yes. do you do anything? He's going to... He's going he's gonna to point at Lorcor and he's going to do a moonwalk backwards. Like, back off. Hey. Like, no, that goes over like, Lorcor's head like, completely. <laughs> He's like, he's like trying to show him to back it up. Yeah, yeah. I understand you. Anything that's like a, a pushing 
<laughs> kind of like, uh, pointing back. Oh, he points back, does he? Okay. Mm. Lorca will step one step back, but watch. Yeah, the attention goes back to you, Tiberius. You continue to play your loot. Uh, well, how are the other guys reacting? The the two sari, um, the two smaller sari look scared and very um, wary of Lorcor. You can see a fear in their eyes. You think perhaps they've heard what's happened with the great lizard man. Um, the big sari, no <clears throat> sign of fear at all. And to be honest, it, after like a few moments of sizing Lorcor up, the left hand would come up again and he'd beckon towards Lorcor, like to cool Lorcor over. And Sin, you'd hear the voice saying like, you don't look so big or scary. Come and join your friend. Then what doesn't move? I'm wait, just growls. I'm, wait, I'm waiting to see what uh, Slug does as well, because he would have heard me saying they're planning to sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Slug, what do you do? That is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got some stuff in your mind, Slug. The, the stairs wind away above you. Um, but yeah, Sin, there's stuff going on in this room, and Sin has said that um, they're going to sacrifice Tiberius. Now, you do also hear the sound of Tiberius's loot playing. It's a weird situation. <laughs> I do hear the loot. Hmm. Ah, it's just don't really know. You would also hear the sound of Lorcor's growling. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if I, if I could bring myself to leave this. I mean, but the stairs are tempting. Yeah, it's tough. You can right. just hold position for now if you like. Tiberius still in the, the stairwell. He wants to impress on this guy free song. Yeah. <laughs> However, that works. <laughs> that they need to be. That they need to talk to someone um, who understands him. Okay. And so you're trying to connect with your audience. Yeah, he'd be doing a lot of. Um, you know, dancing around where he's pretending to be two people and they don't understand each other and they get annoyed. And then when they do on like doing on the stage, doing a lot of like crocodile with his hands, pointing at law core. Um, Love it. I don't know what I'm, tr I don't exactly know how I'd do it, but if I was uh, standing there as Tiberius, it would yes. naturally come to me. I Ready am to... going to have this be a make an impression check. Usually this is for conversation, but you're going to do it with performance. And I have a DC. Um, in fact, it's, it is the will DC of um, the character. So yeah, if you want to make a performance check for me, this is to make an impression. 18. Okay. You oh. go about what you're doing, uh, Tiberius, and... There are points where you feel like you're kind of getting through a little bit and the tension in the air lessens slightly. This is in the space of only about a minute. Um, <laughs> but towards the end of it, you can see that the, the, the big fella, the big fella's attention is being drawn away from you and towards Lorcor as his beckoning has gone un-disobeyed. Um, you see that he's beginning to stand up and his attention's moving away from you and towards Lorcor. No, the doors in this room are there. No. As he stands, he turns towards you, Lorcor, and a big meaty hand points directly at you. He's still got a fairly casual set to his shoulders, and the pointing's kind of a loose point. Um, but this time, instead of a beckoning um, request, he barks an all. And he just says, Stin would understand, no one else does. Come here now. As he points yeah. at his, his right in front of him. Tiberius is going to start doing the worm. <laughs> Tiberius does the worm in the background. <laughs> Lorcor, yeah, how Lorcor. do you react? Lorcor just sort of is growling. Stops mm -hmm. for a moment. 
and he just kind of looks at him with narrowed eyes. He just goes, hmm, and crosses his arms. Ah, there's a moment of connection, Lorcor, and with that, I think you pick up on this is someone with a similar kind of spirit to you. Um, someone with that kind of you against the world, you're going to do your thing way. And there's like a flash of respect as you shrug off his demand. You see the other Sari, like exiled Sari, like cowering either side of him. Um, mm. But as you do so, he um, he reaches back. Um... No, actually, no, he wouldn't have that. Yeah, as you do that, you see him kind of mirror um, what you've been doing in that he, you hear a low growl in his throat as well. Um, and from your time in the jungles of the Serrated Isles, it is a growl that is quite familiar to you. It sounds like a large hunting cat. Like a tiger. <laughs> it was triggered. He wants to kill him now! Yeah! Tiberius, you see this from your position on the floor doing the worm. Um, <laughs> can, I, can I do something? Yes. The, the two, Tiberius, the two of them have locked eyes and the, the, mm -hmm. there's like an electric tension in the room. It's like two yeah. great predators in the jungle are like sizing each other up. Um, yeah, Loco's grinning now and the growls come back into that alligator sort of bellow. Yeah, the guy's it. grinning as well. But Sin, go ahead. What would you like to do? I just want to look to Slug and then look that way. And then she's going to start trying to make her way into the room. But she's going to try and sneak around the side of the room to overlight the eyes. That is fine. Yeah. I won't. In fact, yeah. Uh, what is your stealth modifier? That's five. Yeah. Yeah. You sneak into the room. You can position yourself as you. I can't move. Really like from... Oh. I'm stuck Didn't in the I... wall. Can Tiberius try to get this guy's attention? He has an idea. Uh, you can certainly try. What's the idea? He's going to point at this guy. And then he'll point at Lorcor. Yeah. And then he, he put one finger up, and he put yeah. another finger up. Yeah. Like, rep and then point at both of them. Mm -hmm. And then he'll, like, clash them together. Like, yeah. Fight. Mm -hmm. And then he'll say he'll point at local, and then he'll point up at the ceiling. Okay. And then he'll point at the big guy. Yeah. And then he'll point at Tiberius, and then he'll dance. So he's trying to make a deal. Yeah. But a one v one fight. If uh, local wins, they go up uh, to freedom or whatever this guy thinks a prize is mm -hmm. and if local loses yeah then tiberius will stay and uh dance on the stage okay. <laughs> <Forever>. <laughs> well <laughs> the guy losing local the guy the guy's well... focus is drawn to you for a second tiberius and he understands there's enough of there your in your kind of gestures are enough the other two Sari understand as well and are like backing out of the area. Um, he... He doesn't nod. He doesn't shake his head. There's an understanding. But you can see like his... There's like a... An electricity in the air. These two like great fighters, hunters, are just like staring each other down. It's it's almost, he's kind of there like, sure, whatever you like. Me and this guy, we're gonna, we're gonna do things now. Like, oh, whatever yeah, yeah. happens, happens. Um, as he turns back to you, <coughs> and you can you can see he's like, come on, make the first move. Okay. Um... And yeah, Slug, as um, Sin has gone into the room, would you have followed or would you stay in the stairwell? Just well, trying to get in the position. Oh, I probably would have followed Sin. Yeah, that's pretty good. Reluctantly. As well. And quickly roll for you. 
Yeah, not a problem. You're also undetected. Cool. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> let's have people roll initiative then, please. I want everyone <laughs> to roll initiative, whether or not people want to get involved. That's going to be completely up to you. You can just skip your turns when they come around. Um, but I want everyone to roll initiative so we have an order to things. That and the probably local probably can't beat this guy, but he's a big guy, you know. He's a very big guy. Uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, and Slug and Sin, if you want to use stealth for your initiatives, you're welcome to. It's up to do you. Do you have to? You do not have to. No. I'm just going to drop out for one or two minutes because we're trying to plan rugby stuff and I want to see where exactly they've got to. Ooh, rugby, rugby. That is fine. Yeah, I won't be long. And I know Tiberius wants to stay out of it for now. Yeah, um... I won't be long. Okay. Cool, cool. Is that everybody... Why didn't local go on this app? Okay. Eleven. And slug, please. Can I have an initiative roll for you? Oh, I did it with nine. Oh, cool. Oh. Let's add you to the old turn order. Okay. So yeah, you can imagine your very best Wild West standoffs. The camera panning mm. back and forth between the eyes until eventually the tension snaps like a gunshot in the air as um, none of these people are going to be taking the turn. Uh, he wants Lorcor to go first, actually. So, Lorcor, you're up first. Lorcor. Hmm. Lorcor wants to go first, you know? Kind of does. Yeah, totally up to you. Mm. How far away am I? 35. That's two actions. I have a free hit and I can rage. Yeah, fuck it. Let's get up here. Very cool. Gorgor sudden charges into the fray after raging. Hell yeah. So you can hear this loud bellow as he rages towards this guy. Fucking awesome. And I get a free hit. And he immediately goes to bite him. Fucking Damn awesome. it. D -d -d Damn it! The Damn. jaws come out, pouncing forward, and the guy's hands come up and just like slap your um, head to the side, so your your bite oh. is deflected. Yeah, he's strong. Indeed, he's a strong boy. Put that in. But the temporary is four. I think it's your level plus your constitution. It's my con. Yeah. Uh, five. Five. Yeah, level plus con. Uh, amazing. Right. Uh, I will give everyone the option as the turns go by. Slug, are, we, are you doing anything? You hear the Lorcor's huge roar as he runs towards this guy and jumps at him. It's up to you. Uh, yeah, I'll probably creep forward. Okay. Okay. Creeping, Creeping up. up. Oh, it's been so rubbish and laggy for me. Yeah, Roll Twenty's been laggy for me today too. I've had to like close everything else down. You are still, still unnoticed, unnoticed currently. currently. 
Yay! Well, I shall stay here quietly then. Very cool. Um... Oh, did I skip Sin? I did skip Sin. Sorry, Sin. I would have done the same thing. Yeah, so if you want to position yourself, their all attention is on this clash between these two great fighters. So you, you feel you are still fully unnoticed at this time. Um, that will bring us to... Oh, have I done it? Oh. I'm gonna, I did that completely wrong, but it's fine. Um, it would be his turn now. So he is going to rage. And... Nice. As the, his, the growl builds up in his throat, you hear this feline, this tiger roar. As he changes shape. He's going to use his action oh. to change shape. And he shifts from humanoid form into his hybrid form. Oh, that's so <laughs> I love it. The Goliath <laughs> tattoos shift into these tiger stripes across his body. And large claws extend from his hands as he looks at you, Lorca, with this big grin on his face and fangs fill out his mouth. Um, <laughs> that is one action to change shape. And one action to rage. He gains his 10 HP. And then he'll just use his final action to make an attack. So, honestly. AC will go down by one. Oh shit, he's a tiger now. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Shifts into his tiger form. Oh, cool, I love it. Oh, Just a clash of things. Yep. And um, his unarmed attack. God, it changed the thing again. I'm just going to have to roll a d20 and I'll fix it while you guys are taking your turns. So, there's quite a bit of a modifier to this. Uh, that is a 19 to hit you, Lorcor. That does hit. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yep. So, he deals. Make sure I'm doing this right. Can't miss. Oh. Cool. Damage. This plus seven. So, 11 <laughs> damage to you Excuse as the me. claws yeah. rake up across your body. And yeah, you yeah. immediately think this guy is a big fucking deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. And could you make a fortitude saving throw for me? Yep. Uh, to save. Okay, very nice. The claws rake across you, and you feel uh, the tension of something. There's like a tingle through your body, but you you feel you've managed to push it back. Then it is your turn. I'm going to sneak up over to here. Yep, yep. Uh, that's one action. Uh, that, that's all I'm going to do. Okay. Loco, your turn. Oh, actually, can I um, yeah. recall knowledge? Yeah, absolutely. I'm a big um, I know you've got a lot of trained skills, so whichever you'd prefer, just, just tell me your modifier. Nature plus seven. Plus seven, nice. Okay, hey, so that's. Is it? That's up here. Oh, very cool. Um, yes, you know this to be clear as day, a were-tiger. Um, uh, powerful in their form. You know the curse of the were-tiger is something that only affects humanoids um, mm -hmm. and can be transmitted through um, uh, either... Um... Oh no, okay, I did that wrong. That's fine. You know, actually, you didn't need to make that fortitude save, Hannah, because as Sin now knows, um, the um, curse can only be transmitted through bites, not through claw attacks. Um, the um, the curse operates around um, cycles of the moons. Um, in Archivia, you have the three moons, and the different um, were-creatures, their cycle operates differently um, 
is kind of connected to one of the moons. Um, the Were Tiger is connected to uh, Lortry, whose cycle is each month. So um, a Were Tiger is forced to change shape under the the full moon um, of Lortry, which is seen as eldest son in the the Archivian moon. Um, world. But yeah, you know these things to be nasty fighters and to have a weakness to uh, silver. Mm. Cool. Yeah, you, you yeah, you get the feeling that um, Lorcor's in some trouble <laughs> if he tries to take this thing on by itself. A Goliath were tiger. Yeah. Um, but Lorcor, your turn. If, Lorcor. Sin, if Sin doesn't want to use her last action. Um, no, I don't think so. I can't think of anything I'd do, so... Okay. Norpo, raging as he is, is also still grinning. He likes a good fight. So, but he's gonna try. I'm just gonna try and test the water with trying to trip him over. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So this will be your athletics against his, um... Um, reflex DC, I believe. No idea. Have a little look, see. Mm. Trip. You need a free hand, which Not you great. don't need. Yeah, reflex DC. Uh, 19, yeah, unfortunately that does fail. As you're kind of testing Dang. the waters, you batter your tail <laughs> into the, the side of one of his legs, but it's like hitting a tree trunk and uh, mm. he stands tall and growls at you. Yes, indeed. I'm gonna try an intimidating glare. Let's demoralize him. Um, awesome. Try it anyway. Yeah. That so that's work. intimidate uh, against his will DC. Yeah. Ah. Uh, well, it does fail, I'm afraid. Um, and we, we, the last, we're just trying to attack him. Actually, is it on second now? It is on second. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well tracked. Damn it! Oh, that would have been a great damage roll as well. Yeah, it it's, it's a it's a six seconds of futility. You try your hunter's tricks, um, but he seems canny to all of them. Um, you find yourself staring up at the the muscle bound nightmare slug. Mm -hmm. It is your turn. Yeah, slug turn. I'll move forward a bit and then do bidding ward on, on those obvious guys. On local? Local and the Tiger Man. Yeah, so yeah. you gain plus one AC against the Tiger Man. Very nice. Yeah. Tiberius. Anything from you, if you're back? Yep. He's gonna. Uh, hmm. Where is it? Mm -hmm. oh, dancing lights, one eighty two actions. Mm. Is oh God. Is inspire courage one action? Yes. Yeah, he's gonna inspire courage. Very cool. Um, but he wants it to affect both of them. Like he's bigging them both up. <laughs> Interesting. Um, but then he will also, while he's trying to big them both up, mm -hmm. he will be doing a lot of things that Lawcore would understand. He's okay. trying to aid Lawcore by distracting this guy to be like, what the hell is that guy doing up there? And he's also got the... Um, Reliable Squire, so it adds a two. It adds a two plus circumstance bonus to age checks, and he's That's trying to distract sick. this guy from Lawcore. So Lawcore's got a plus three, and this guy's got plus one now. <laughs> Incredible! All right, so do a um, performance check for me, please, to see yeah. if your aid goes through. But I love that. I'll keep that in mind. Oh fuck! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't he have had a hero point because it's another hour and he was doing the fucking worm on stage? I mean, if... uh, I do fully agree with that, actually. Yeah. So yeah, Thank if you me. wish to use a hero point, I do. Go right ahead. There we go. 
Okay, very cool. That is successful. So yeah, Lorcor, you've actually got a plus three um, mm -hmm. to hit circumstance and status bonus combined. So yeah, he'd look like he's damage. shouting for both of them, but because these guys don't understand it, he's yep. mostly just t saying things about the tiger, like kill it like he did that jaguar, things like oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Definitely and turning on. Tiberius is not smart enough to know that Lorcor can't take this guy. <laughs> 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 okay, the guy's but, turn. So it's a plus, sorry, a plus three to one. So Ooh. it will be a plus three to hit, mm -hmm. and then Inspire Courage also gives you plus one damage if you do hit. Okay. Um, and I think you get plus one to your saving throws, but I assume the aid is for uh, for the attacks that you want to help Lorcor with there to hit him. Um. Okay, the guy, seeing as you try to bite him, he's going to try and bite you. Yeah. Okay. Jaws attack. Oh, I'm so annoyed I thought I'd set up his character sheet, but it's fine. So that, again, this is a plus 14. Yeah. Oh my god. 32. That's a crit. Oh, that is a crit. Um, so that'll be... And I'll take your fortitude save from before, so you resist the um, the curse. And we roll the damage. Okay, you take 28 damage. Fucking hell. Yeah. Nearly you, down already. Yep, yeah, you get the feeling this guy isn't meant to be fought in single combat. Um, should, have, um, should have gone upstairs. <laughs> should have gone upstairs <laughs> indeed. So yeah, the guy just like roars up and then plunges his jaws down into Lorcor's collarbone and you see the fangs sink deep and scales kind of scatter down Lorcor's back and clatter onto the ground as Lorcor roars out in, in return. Um, you resist imagine, the curse. Imagine everyone else is like, oh. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, all of you guys watching can see this is going real bad. Um... He will use his action because um, with his jaws attack, he's got the grab ability. So he has to spend an action, but he automatically grabs you. So you are grabbed. Oh, not, re grabsy. not restrained, but grabbed. It's the Is it, it's not, there's no save to it, actually. No, he doesn't have to roll. It's, uh, it's an ability. It's, it's essentially because oh, he's got okay. you in his jaws right now. Like, he's grabbed you oh, with right. his jaws. You're fixed in yeah. place. He's, he's bitten down into you. Um, and I think with that, he's going to finish off with an intimidation of his own. Um, mm, yeah. But he doesn't have intimidating glass. This will be with a, um, a minus to it because you don't understand his language. And because he's kind of like talking through your shoulder right now. <laughs> so, B minus one. So yeah, he does fail as well. So you are not frightened, yeah. and that is the end of his turn. It's thin. It's going real bad for Lorcor. I'm going to spend all three actions. Oh, shit. Um, to, like, just... So I wanted to sort of... I know it's sort of just out of range, maybe, but I want to make it look like the thing is kind of, like, coming out of Lorcor, like, behind Lorcor's foot or something. Or, like, mm -hmm. as close as I can. And I want to summon animal... Oh, okay. And I'm gonna summon a, a skunk because it's oh. <laughs> like the one below. Amazing. Obviously not as big as the one below, but. Yep. No, that's perfect. It means I'll have a picture ready to go. Oh, Skunky shit. boy. I don't know how summoning works in Pathfinder, so. Neither do I. This will be a new thing to learn. Let's have a quick look. Summon animal. Summon animal. Three actions. Duration. Sustained up to one minute. Conjure an animal to fight for you. Summon a common creature that has the animal trait and whose level is minus one. Such as those below. Heightening the spell increase the maximum level. Um, I assume it goes on your turn? I assume it acts as a like a companion, so you can spend one action to give it two? Let me have a little look, because it doesn't detail it. Uh, um, how does this Find a 2e. 
Yes, yes, yes. Here we go. A creature called by a spell or effect gains the summoned trait. A summoned creature can't summon other creatures, create their blah, 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 blah. It has the minion trait if it tries to cast a spell. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, otherwise, standard abilities for a creature of its kind. It generally attacks your enemies to the best of its ability. So I guess I just roll initiative for it. Oh, sweet. Oh, no. Immediately when you finish casting the spell, the summoned creature uses its two actions for that turn. Sweet. Uh, uh, I'm going to... Um... Summon... So yeah, I'm just going to make its initiative on your turn, or like just after you. Okay, I want to make it um, use its spray mask. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it initiative 13. Go up to there. Uh, awesome. The skunk spray. propels a stream of acrid musk in a 10 foot line. Each creature in the line must attempt a DC 16 fortitude save. <laughs> 16 fortitude save. Got it. Is that me, isn't it? No, it's just no, it's sounded like next to you. Uh, fortitude, fortitude. Okay. But <laughs> rolls a big number. So, is there anything on spray musk? It's two actions. Targets, targets unaffected. That's fine. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Fucking right. How much HP does a skunk have? Seven AC fifteen. Cool. Uh, that brings us to Lorcor. Lorcor in a loud, uh, last dash for doing some damage. Yep. Gonna fight him again. Yep. Fuck you now. Yeah, unfortunate rolling. Dice not being with you. Rolling again. Get plus Ooh. three to that. Yes, so the 19 with the plus 3 does hit, and you get an extra plus 1 to your damage, so 8, 10, uh, 11 damage. Nice, yeah. Nice. You draw blood. Blood mats in the tiger, the bright orange fur, as, um, yeah, you deal a nice chunk of damage to mats. Yeah. Might as well just do a third one, I guess. Um, with a plus three anyway. Yeah, fighting away. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my god. it's a critical hit! Yay. Roll critical damage, please. Oh shit. Nice. Oh, nice. Yay. Oops. That's an extra one. Final blaze of fury. Yeah, so, and that doesn't have the rage. So, 14, it all gets doubled, I think, so 14. 16, 17, double this 34 damage. Nice, nice. Why is so, yeah. it doubled? Um, oh, you're right. I just need to double the rage. So 14. Um, oh, my brain. Plus 4 is 18. Plus 2 is 20. I think it all doubles. I'll check afterwards, but to be honest, it's too cool not to have it double anyway. So, I thought... Yeah, oh, oh, I don't 20. know. The, the roll for critical damage has doubled already, but it's not including the rage. Oh. And it might be that rage is, does, isn't meant to double, but I'm just going to do it for, oh, yeah, for that one. Rage. Um, so you you tear down. Um, in fact, yeah, you tear out a chunk of this guy's pectoral muscle um, law core and blood sprays across the ground. The two uh, normal Sari are kind of like, <gasps> like gasping. Um, and the guy just like grins and roars down at you and you roar up and there's just this moment of this like worthy opponents to each other <laughs> um yeah very nice critical hit slug it is yeah. your turn can sin look to slug and just nod at him <laughs> yeah like you see sin <laughs> nod at you more sort of nod you know you kind of like blast him slug <laughs> kind of uh, okay, I know that nod. Is it blasting? In an time? execute order 66 kind of way. <laughs> it's pretty bad. I'm, I'm Palpatine and you're Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Do it. Hmm. What they? What they? Hmm. 
That's going to be from the Snugmeister. Snugmeister General. Does he have a magic missiles? Yeah, I'm going to do magic missiles. Very nice. How many actions? All of them. Oh! <laughs> the magic missiles go flying off. I assume at the big guy? Yeah. 3d4 plus 4, please. Uh, 3d4 plus 3. <clears throat> They all automatically hit. 3d4? Plus 3. Yep. Okay. Oh, no. I did it wrong. <laughs> oh, oh. Seven times for damage. As That's they so slow, rubbish. As they slam into his back. You do see? They they deeply impact. You see some do I get to re-roll that a hero point? Or is that just silly? Um... <laughs> Allow you to re-roll it with a hero point if you want to spend it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I do want to you channel your magic, the slug magic, the the slug slugic, slugic. Oh, much better. So yeah. nine plus three is twelve. Right. Yeah, and with that, you can see. Oh, that's wrong. You can see the guy actually wince his back, arches, argh, and he roars out. Um, and he gestures out with his hand towards you, Slug, and shouts out in Sari, Get the little one! As the <laughs> other two Sari are going to spring into action. Tiberius! You can see it's no longer a, a yeah. 1v1. He, he sees Slug do it, and he's going to be like, We need Quivisher! And um, <laughs> he's going to also do a magic missile. Amazing. Another three actions. Yeah. Pew, 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 pew. the big guy, obviously. Nice. Three, five, two. Makes ten damage. Yeah, this guy's looking worse for wear now. And then... From multiple sides. Fucking, you're literally like <laughs> Godzilla taking him down. Just like missiles. <laughs> Take him down! <laughs> <clears throat> Oh my god, Tiberius literally did let them fight. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Right, the two Sari. They've been given orders to go after Slug. This one is going to scramble between the chairs, which is going to severely hamper his ability to move. Two strides. Yeah, he's just going to three strides up to you, Slug. And the other one is close enough that he's going to stride. And with his free left hand, he's going to try and grab you. Let's not close the all-important skunk tab. Grab. No, I should piece myself up. Grapple! He's going to try and grapple you. Uh, the floor. <laughs> so, athletics. Oh, he's got a six. <gasps> that might be a critical fail, actually. What is your fortitude, DC? It is your fortitude, DC, 16, so he critically fails. <laughs> so a critical fail on a grapple. Um, it gives... Uh, you have a choice, Slug. You, as he critically fails, he completely fucks it up, and he actually, like, like he tries to grab you on the shoulder, but gets his hand tangled in, like, a strap you have for your bag. You can use this opportunity for free. This is part of <laughs> what works uh, critical fail with a grapple. You can either have him full prone, or you can, ha you can grapple him for free. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite fun. I, I don't want to grab him though, that's too much. Oh, okay. no, I'll let him over. So, yeah, you just use his momentum as he just tumbles to the ground. And he moved, he grappled and failed, fell prone. So, he'll use his last action to stand back up and feel very shame faced about it. That's him. The Rager. You are his opponent, Lorcor. Oh, yes, indeed. You. He's going to bite. Down on you. GG, Lorcor. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I got a good chunk in there. 
He did. Yeah. That crit was fucking awesome. In fact, hero point for that crit. Because that otherwise, fucking... I don't think everyone else would attack. Yeah, that was heroic. Um, there's a he does hit you. It's definitely going to down you. It's not a crit, so you don't go to wounded uh, dying two. Just go to dying one, please. Yes, yes, yes. And he is going to the second action. I think that's two actions. So yeah, his second and third action. Oh no, it's actually one. Damn, guys, wrong. He is going to. <laughs> He's going to ignore the skunk for now. <laughs> He's going to step up towards Tiberius, and he is going to make an attack. Plus fourteen to this. Ah, no! oh! He critically fails! Oh my gosh. <laughs> Swipes out with his claws, Tiberius, and in another addition to your dance repertoire, you limbo under the, the swipe <laughs> as it comes towards you. I like, yeah. I like to imagine he did the worm to a yeah, yeah, he definitely did the worm. <laughs> you worm out the other side. Uh, that is his full turn. Sin, your turn. I'm going to spend one action casting Scorching Blast, and oh. then I'm going to spend my other two actions firing two shots at him. Oh, that's so cool! Yeah. You set your hand on fire. Ranged spell attack roll. Sweet. Yeah, go I ahead. I think he's within 30 feet. He's definitely within yeah. 30 feet, yeah. You got it. Um, how do I do that, ranged spell attack roll? Uh, I think it's on your character sheet. So, top left on the spells section. Spell oh, attack yes. roll. Uh, no. Plus I'll seven. click it, though. Oh, really? Let's see where to click it. Let's see. Scene. Oh, you're right. Yeah, it's roll it. yeah. Do I get a multiple attack penalty on spell attack rolls? It is an attack, yeah, so the second one would have a multiple attack penalty. The first one is an attack. Oh, it's a no. crit! 2d8 nice. and double it. Simple as. And it takes 1d6 persistent fire damage! Oh, bad bro. But... 10, still oh. good. I mean, 10, still good. He, that scorch is right up his back, and you see red, black, like, blackened, reddened skin as the fur is just scorched away. Second attack is a 14. 14 does not hit. This guy has got good AC. But that first hit was good, and he takes persistent fire damage. He's burning. D6, uh, that'll happen at the end of each of his turns. Very nice. Um, <laughs> the skunk! <laughs> what What's the skunk do? That's gonna bite him. Yeah! You can roll it for me, it's at a plus seven. Okay. It's pretty decent damage. Yeah. I was looking up the ones, and, uh, and then uh, this guy had like a guide on Reddit. <laughs> and, and he had the best one was a skunk, and I was like, well, there's a skunk downstairs, so it kind of makes a lot of sense anyway. Revenge. How do I... Oh, the dice for so, Yeah, yeah d20 just... plus 7, please. Still got to roll fairly well, this guy's got a good AC. Yeah, ten. not quite enough, I'm afraid. Um, you can keep trying to bite if you like, got one more action. He's got the minion trait, so he only has two actions in the turn. Oh, I might as well. Yeah. Um... It's agile as well, so it's only minus four. So plus three, d20 plus three. Got to roll pretty well. Nope. Unfortunate. But you see this skunk like gnawing away on his leg, doesn't quite get oh. through the fur. Could it have moved around behind him to flat foot him or not? Or is it um, too stupid for that? No, you, oh, it, that would have taken the first action, but yeah, yeah you could have done so. And it's the same roll, so. Yeah, that would hit. Oh, sweet, I'll do that then. <laughs> Flanking with the worm Tiberius. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, D8. just a straight D8, yeah. No mod, no uh, modifier at all. Nice. More damage. It's not bad. Yeah, he is. He's looking worse for wear. Uh, Lorcor, please, your recovery check. Mm, indeed. What is it again? Just a D20. Just a straight D20. Maybe you can you spend a hero point just to automatically do it, though. Also true. I don't know if I've got one. You do, I did. I did one. give you a hero point for that epic crit, as you were in his arms. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Might as well use that. Then. 
Yeah, so you automatically yeah. stabilize and do not gain the wounded condition. Nice. You can get rid of it. Uh, Slug, your turn. You got these two bozos attacking you. Absolute joke. The absolute joke. Joke. I'll remind, I'll remind you, you that unlike in D&D, not everything has a tax opportunity and you know that these guys don't, so you can move away freely. It's up to you. Oh, that's quite a good plan. Yeah. Yeah, let's move away. Very cool, very cool. Uh, just over to here. Excellent. And then, uh... Oh, I don't know what to do now. Oh. Cool. Tempted to help fight this beast again, but I don't know, that seems a bit a bit altruistic for Slug. <laughs> I like your thinking. Yeah, I mean, he gonna... could try and steal the kill, though. That'd be pretty sweet. He'd kill the big oh, beast. That's true. It's up to you. No, no, I'm just going to spurt these guys. Yeah. Oh my! Uh, Click that spell for me. Oh, actually, conjuring the magics. Maybe I will. Maybe I do want to go against the big tiger thing. Okay. Very cool. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, he's in range. Mm. No. Oh, I can't decide. <laughs> the the multiple options go through your mind, Slug. They're all potentially super cool, but they're all potentially super lame. There's no clear path for the coolness. There's two. two <laughs> different I think... Um, yeah, I'll do a roll. One second. Yeah. Let's do a one or two is the tiger and uh, three and four is the guys. Nice. There we go. It's the guys. The guys. All right, I'll shoot them with a, uh, you know, acid splash, whatever. Yeah, nice. That'll hit both of them for smash damage. Yeah, exactly. So they both automatically take one damage from the splash, and then let's see if you hit. What do I roll? I get so confused. That's all right. Uh, we're also getting used to it. You just click the acid splash blue button and it should roll it for you. Oh, simple. An 11. So that misses. But the good thing about acid splash is it does that splash damage. So they both automatically take one damage. So they are burned by some of the acid there. Very nice. Unless you want to use a hero point. No, I use my hero point. No worries. Tiberius Quivershank. Tiberius just wants this guy to die. So he's going to do another magic missile. But I'll pick which one's good depending on if he dies. Very cool. So one at the big guy. Three damage. Still up. Two at the big guy. Four damage. Still up. Shit. Five at the big guy. Oh. Right. <laughs> oh, oh. I think that's just it, isn't it? And with that, exactly <laughs> what you needed to roll. It, Tell also, me how Tiberius takes him down. When he does to go to do the magic missile, he goes into a little break dance, and every time that he shoots out one of his arms from like <laughs> hovering in the air, it goes towards him. And at the end, he does that thing where he gets both hands and he like goes like Ooh, on his chest. <laughs> Take a hero point. That's fucking amazing. <laughs> As this I mean, guy, like, this bitch. honorable warrior, <laughs> <laughs> is laid low by the breakdancing bard. He beat who he wanted to be. As he falls to the ground. Very nice. The sorry. That's a pretty big hit for them. But Slug is a child. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to try and go for Slug. Stride. Oh, that's not fair. 
<laughs> Stab. <laughs> oh, 25. Oh my god. Seven damage. Not quite a crit. And then he's gonna start making his exit. Gets him this cowardly stab against a child, then starts running away. This one is gonna try and yeah, he's gonna see if he can take you down. Spear attack. Ah, fuck. Yeah, he's running away. Fuck this. Essentially, at the same time, they both just rush you, try and attack you, and then seeing that you're not, you haven't collapsed the ground. They try and beat a hasty retreat. Gurk Bane, the Rager, is down. Did he get a second bite on you, Lorcor? Um, Take you out. I can't remember. I think he did. I think I forgot to make you roll a fortitude saving throw. Let's do it. Fortitude save. Oh. oh, you <laughs> bastard. Nice <laughs> done. Uh, Sin, your turn. Reach See spell it. wildfire. Nice. Now that's some good play. It's ten foot burst, isn't it? Yeah, so I want it to go right here. Go. I don't know if so that's the right size, but... No, that's okay. I will draw my thing. It starts out like a big cross, I remember. And you tell me how you'd like it to be. Exactly there. Oh, perfect. Yeah, blocking their escape. Very nice. As the floor crackles with these deep, dark coals. Um, is that your yeah. full turn? Oh, yeah, because reach spell. Very nice. The, the skunk. You want to send the skunk after them? Uh, yeah, might as well. I mean, technically, you could plunk the skunk down in front of the door and they wouldn't be able to get past Yeah, it. fuck it, let's do that. Send the skunk on its way, I think it's I want to get it, like, up here, if I can. Okay. 20. 40. I think that's it. Yeah? It, it's gonna, it would have to go up and down on the stage. Oh, okay. Right. Um, so I think the furthest it can get is... There. there. Oh, okay, there. Yeah. Loco, you are stable. Slug. Yep. One of them ran up and stabbed you with his spear, and then they've <laughs> run off, and fire has appeared on the ground in front of them. What do you what do? What do you do? Well, you know, I guess I'll just shoot some more acid at them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hit that button. Uh, 17 hits. Yay. So it will be uh, a D roll a D6 for me, please. Plus three. And which one were you aiming for? Whichever one that was that stabbed me, please. Oh, yeah, very nice. It was this first. No, it wasn't the second one. They both take one from the splash damage automatically, and then this one takes an extra six. Ouch. Yeah, he is badly scarred from the acid burning across him now. It splashes effectively. Um, and you have uh, another action if you want to move anywhere or do anything else. I'll move forward a bit and chase after him. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. As he says, he runs towards him. <laughs> he holds up his stick. Um, Tiberius, your turn. Um, he'll draw out his bow. Yep. Then he'll run round. Right, is Lorcor dying? He's not dying, he's stabilised. Okay. Then okay, he'll run out this way. You can't see anyone. Yep. Can you prepare, like, a shot? Uh, two action to prepare oh, one action. Oh, oh, it's two actions to repair. It's two action. It's essentially to prepare something. It takes you an extra action. So if you're preparing a one action thing, which is shooting, um, yeah, then it would take two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see if there's anything else you can do. Take cover. You can move again. You could inspire courage. Yeah, I don't think anyone's in range, right? Really. I think it works on yourself, though. Although, I guess, yeah, because it's until your next but turn. But then it's yeah. not... Oh, it would get the skunk! <laughs> yeah, it would. 
My um, little friend, go forth and conquer. Get him, skunko. <laughs> he'll, he'll just move up there then, so you can What's see that? everything. Very nice. Good vibe. So that door is closed, right? It is currently closed, yeah. They'd have to yeah. spend an action to open it. Good. <laughs> uh, this sorry. Fuck. Because he's going first, he's going to be the one that fucking runs into the wildfire. Ow. Um, and it's difficult terrain, right? Uh, so 510. I don't know if it is. Okay. Five. The name of Ash, if it becomes, oh, because, yeah, it becomes hazardous terrain. If that's what difficult right. terrain is. I think it might be an even worse version. Of Creature it. that moves on the ground takes one fire damage for every square it moves into. Creature that ends yeah. its turn. Let's make a reflex save. We'll take one persistent. Uh, okay. No, hazardous just means the damage. Okay. That's fine. So he takes one, two, four. So yeah, like a guy running across coals, just like ah, ah, ah. he's running along. Um, his that's one stride, two strides, and then he's gonna spend an action to open the door. Friend cannot run through the fire. He's gonna fucking spend a lot of movement trying to get around it. Twenty-five. Through the chair. Five. Uh, uh. They can only get to there. Yeah, they're both just like scrambling towards the door, but that's all their turn. Then, your turn. Don't think I'm in range to do much, unfortunately. That's alright. Anymore? No. Um. I'll just sustain. Which means mm -hmm. it grows. Yep, yep, yep. And I'll move two other actions to here. Ish. Yeah, like there. Um, <laughs> deep. Very cool. The skunk! Get him. Get him! <laughs> <laughs> Make an attack roll for me. That's this could genuinely kill this guy. Oh, it was so close Whoa. to the 20. Uh, a 21. A 21 definitely hits. Roll a d8. Ugh, oh, not enough. But a nasty jump into his Achilles as he's running out. Uh, slug. Oh, slug. Slug time. Does Tiberius get his prepared shot at any point? He didn't. He didn't have enough actions. Oh. Goodness. Yeah, you need to get to there to make your acid splash. Yeah, a bit far away, aren't they? I mean, you could do it, but you could take two fire damage for doing it, by going in the wildfire. Yeah, I'm not sure that's worth it. Yeah, completely your call. Mm, let me see if I've got anything else. Man, that reach, reach spell, I understand now. Yeah, wouldn't that be good? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good choice, that is. Basically missed. Yeah. yeah, I'd say it's pretty mandatory. I had the reach, but she had the flexibility. <laughs> <laughs> Mass effect. Mass effect. Oh, that's it. I was going to say. <laughs> oh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to run up to the edge of the flames and continue to yell at them. <laughs> Make an intimidation check for me, please. As you shout oh, wow. out across oh. the wildfire. Intimidation, which you are trained in. <laughs> I think that might be enough. Uh, that will DC. Yeah, it is. <laughs> this guy just looks over his shoulder and sees Slug holding his stick up in the air, ah! calling out across the wildfire ground. He's just like, Ooh! and is frightened. 
Tiberius. Um, he will try and shoot. Wait, hang on. Can he do anything first? Um, I think he will inspire courage on himself. Very nice. Does it hit the skunk? No. <laughs> and then he will try and shoot. So plus one. Which one are we shooting? The frightened the one. The weaker one. Yeah. Yeah, frightened one has lower AC because of being frightened. <laughs> Oh my god, is that a crit? 20. <laughs> 20. Not quite a crit. Two oh. piercing damage. He's going to he's gonna go for YOLO second oh, shot. Wait. That's three damage because of Inspire Courage. Yeah. That and, goes twen dead. and 20 because, yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, the Inspire Courage made the difference. Every plus one matters. He's Ding. also going to go for the YOLO shot against the other guy then. Hell yeah! <laughs> oh, the YOLO was indeed YOLO. Eight. 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 Nice. Oh fuck, he's going to run! <laughs> right. Door would have closed at the top of the round, but yes, he will spend one action. Open Wait, did, the I door. Have, did I have to sustain the fucking animal? Spirit? Oh yes! Because I did not realise that. I mean, the skunk. Yeah, I'm not that. Yeah, I did have to say it, so it would just be gone. Oh, it shouldn't have been there, but yeah. It's fine. It did not have a major impact. Um, I think I probably would have sustained both, but whatever. Sari goes scrambling up the stairs with two actions of sprinting. Is anybody going to pursue? I don't think we can catch him, right? I don't think so, no. Okay. With that, the Exile Sari disappears, the door once again with that creepy natural glass sh pulls back together, and you are left alone. Can I check this guy's body for anything? No, I'm sure there's more Sari everywhere, and they might be going to get some more. The slug's gonna run over towards Sin and be like, I've been stabbed, help me! <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try and heal Slug in the next 10 minutes. Incredible. Well, all bleeds on the floor. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, roll that medicine check for me, please. What is the crying angel pendant? I like, I like to imagine Slug's just got like a little baby on his arm. <laughs> yeah. Well. Fuck. Sorry, slug. Uh, no! would, would you like to use the crying angel pendant? What does that do? I think it's for just this very um, situation. Yeah, you can change the crit failure into a normal failure, so he, he won't take damage. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Uh, the pendant is now, uh, you can feel the magical essence gone. So I have a nice little statuette, but... I'll chuck it on the floor. I don't want it. Be gone. Uh, checking the body. Where is the stuff? Would he have reverted back when he died? Um, no. It seems like this mm -hmm. form is his natural form, the hybrid mm -hmm. form, and he was perhaps maintaining his humanoid form for the sake of um, yeah, for the sake of the comfort of his fellows. We're mm. gonna... Indeed. Uh, yes, in this room, not on the body, but you would have seen it, um, I think probably perhaps on the wall, um, so everyone would be aware of this, but you do see a shield, a buckler, um, that looks quite ornate and interesting it doesn't look sorry um in um origin or anything you think perhaps this is something they've pilfered from a shipwreck or something um it glimmers um with a fine light and it's lavishly decorated with gilding and inset gemstones i don't care about that um and then also so if anyone wants to take that you can add uh Yes, Glamorous shield. 
And then similar to your um, Crying Angel statuette, there's another small stone statuette. This one shaped like a rat um, and threaded through with um, veins of a glimmering silver metal. It's very small. It's only about one inch tall. What should I call it? Um, rat statue until you've identified it. Yeah. Um, and I will say 10 minutes passed and no sari appeared. Mm. Okay. Let me try and heal more cool. Yep, very cool. Next 10 minutes. Oh, that is a critical success. 48. Okay. Uh, 15. And if you wish to start attempting to double that for the hour, you are very welcome to do so. Might as well. Yeah. So Sin continues to administer the law core. Sin yes. has taken the, the rat statue. Is anybody taking the shield? Um, I think I'll use a shield. I, I don't want to use a shield. Is taking it. Oh, did Tiberius yeah. say that? I apologize. Then yeah. Okay. It's like yeah. it would probably be like the fanciest thing you've ever seen in your life growing up. That's in why I wanted it. Yeah. Mm. Um. Very cool. Yeah. It it's eerie. The body's lying on the floor. The 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 mm. uh, sari getting away. Um. You expected to you know have a, a stampede of exiled sari or however many of them there are left here. You've killed quite a few coming down the stairs, but the door remains closed. Um. And the hour passes. Local, you are healed mm. the full 30 hit points um, yeah. as you find yourselves standing and, and kind of waiting in this room. You've had time to take in the surroundings. It really does seem like a chamber built for performance. Um, and you notice that well, anyone who's kind of like walked around in this hour, you notice that each of the four kind of alcoves, each of the four sides of this cross shape of walls has a different theme seemingly relating to like a, a primary emotion so one has a theme of like jubilance and happiness another one is tragedy and sadness another one anger and fury and the last one clear signs of fear and fright um mm -hmm. yeah the chairs are all there the frescoes around the edge of the room all seem to depict aspects of performance and theater mm. Lawful would stand up, look down, well, look at this body of this tiger man, um, sort of, mm, sort of just smile, but not like a grin, but he would just be, it was a worthy battle. But well, I must look. get stronger, otherwise my mother will be sad. But Lorco, if uh, he hadn't ripped out his pectoral muscle before he went down, I don't know if we would have been brave enough to do anything. So it's because of you we won. You were inspiring while I was just breaking my moves up on the stage. I mean, it was no big deal, but uh, it got the job done. <laughs> <laughs> I am not inspiring, I am strong. But also, it's thanks to Little Slug, after you uh, got that bite in, he really gave uh, the big boy one. Oh, sorry, I mean Big Slug. <clears throat> oh, that's fair enough. Lock or walk over to your slug. They give you a little rub on the head. Good. Oh, Good. That's lovely. Oh, boy. <laughs> Slug's well chuffed for that. <laughs> And they, he'll go back over to you, Sin, and he'll give you a like a like a nod, like an appreciative nod, but like in a lawful way, like a. Mm. She just but yeah. stares at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, lawful is gonna go back down to the little lights and heal more. Yes, you are able to do so. Okay, you open the door into the stairwell, kind of take a moment to listen and look up and down. Nobody's coming. And as you head back down, you're able to, to reach the lights. Do you use the spa room or do you use the, the tunnel room? Oh, yeah. Is the spa room one, one room up? The spa room is one room up, yeah. Oh, yeah, let's just go up then. 
Okay, yeah, you kind of tentatively head up, what, expecting Saria every turn. You open the door into the, the spa room, kind of like bows drawn and whatever, ready to fight, and there's no one there. And mm. you can bathe in the waters and regain full hit points, each of you. Lawful just looks around to everyone. Have we killed them all already? There weren't many left. Um... One got away, but we killed the other one. Hmm. I assume they know we're coming. There's probably some massive brick wall ahead that we're going to run that, run head first into. Oh, I will break the brick wall with my head. I have no doubt, local. <laughs> Um, I mean, I don't know if anyone else is doing anything. No. I want to. I want to cast. Um, bleh, what's it called? Blue. Um. Oh no, I took that spell off. I want to detect magic on the. Oh no, it just detects magic, doesn't it? Never mind. I got rid of. My other spell. Read aura. Yeah. Actually, fuck it. I'm, I I think I would have not kept sigil and kept read aura because mm -hmm. it seems too important. So I will cast read aura on it. Awesome. Uh, the which the, oh the rat yeah. statue. You get the um school of magic of conjuration. The start identifying that though. Very cool. Take you ten minutes. Yeah, and also I realised that there were some bits and pieces that I forgot to say about in the um, storage areas because you went into each of the other rooms. You definitely would have come across them, um, and I think you probably would have picked them up. So they include um, a mysterious-looking potion. So it would have been in a little potion bottle. I probably would have tried to identify that whilst we were resting. Yeah, totally fair. Um, and for you, but it's quite like how the fuck did we survive? <laughs> that was that was you yeah. guys are learning. Like that was good tactics and smart play and the local. I mean, the clutch crit was fucking badass. But um, yeah, that was that was awesome. There were multiple plays there that I was I thought were really really good. Um, yeah, that guys, we're awesome. You're the awesomest. <laughs> um, alive. <laughs> you do identify the potion. This is a gecko potion. Sticky brown mm. uh, liquid with flecks of sand suspended in it. For five minutes after drinking this potion, your fingertips sprout thousands of microscopic bristled hairs that cling to objects, granting you a plus one bonus to climbing or palming an object and to your reflex oh. DC against disarm. Local from the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> Someone else can have that. Um there would be an item which you don't need to identify. You would be have been aware of this sin as a alchemical item, so it's not technically magical. Um, but just from probably from your times uh, in the the halls of certain institutions and researching, uh student pranks would have involved this. Um, there is a um, make sure I got the right one. Oh yeah, this is a moderate. You, there's a moderate skunk bomb. Um, Sweet. A skunk bomb can be used yeah. for one action. You throw it. They're made from concentrated odors of things actually much stinkier than skunks. Um, the bomb grants an item bonus, blah, 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 attack rolls. So you throw it, it deals poison damage and poison splash damage. Any creature hit by the bomb or in its area must make a fortitude save. Um, DC based on the bomb's type, blah, blah, blah. Um, so this type of bomb deals 2d4 poison damage and 2 poison splash damage. A fortitude DC of 17. And it can cause the target to be sickened on a success. Sickened and slowed while sickened on a, on a failure, which is really powerful. And on a critical failure, blinded for one round, sickened two, and slowed while sickened. Slowed means they get one less action on their turn. Damn. Um, so yeah. I'll um, 
take that out. Can you type the thing in the chat? What's it called in the description for me? Absolutely. Skunk ball, uh, you say. And also for flavor, which is why I fucking love Pathfinder so much. They always dump flavor into things. Creatures sickened by the bomb emit an odor that lasts 10 minutes after the sickened condition ends, or one hour if they were also blinded. <laughs> That's um, cool. Skunk bomb, yes. Put it. Speaking of flavor, speaking of flavor, as Lorkle's going around everywhere, after he said that he wants to get stronger, he just started picking everything up that looks really heavy, and like... <laughs> He's working out! <laughs> I mean, he's working out as he goes. <laughs> I love it. And yes, Even uh, all... if there's nothing to pick up, then he picks up um, slug. <laughs> <laughs> One slug, two slug, three slug, <laughs> amazing. Exactly. <laughs> Um, and the last thing that there was a third thing in the storage area um, this was a magical thing I assume again you would have used some of that time you had a lot of time sin yeah. to identify it this is a snap leaf it is a consumable mm -hmm. item so a single use uh, like a talisman you affix it to your armor um, small crystalline carving takes the shape of a tree leaf and attaches to armor or clothing when you activate the snap leaf, you gain the benefits of Featherfall and a second level invisibility spell for one minute or until you stop fooling. Fuck, I really, I'd first. really like that unless anyone else really wants that. No. Snap leaf. Especially if no one else is identifying it, she just would have really been like, this is shit. Yeah. I'll, I'll hold on to it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Can you copy again? We can yeah. Yep. This one's a bit shorter, which is nice. See how well this copies if I highlight it all. Probably not great, but we'll see. Boom. Oh, that copies really nicely. Yeah. yeah. So you can only snap it when you're falling. So you can't just use it whenever to turn invisible. But if you're falling, you can get further fall and invisibility for one minute. Well, just jump off something, make, right? Make yourself yeah. Invisible. Yeah, absolutely. That is completely legitimate. Um, very cool. That is all the items. I need to award XP as well as we draw this session to a close as you're sitting and waiting uh, in the room currently. Um, you gain a total of 2,000. 240 experience points. Level up, yeah. yeah. I believe it does level you up, yeah. How much would you be on now then? Ten. I, I think it yeah, puts you ten over into level three. So you guys have reached level three. Nice. Oh, shit. Ready for what might be a bit of a final confrontation. We get level three, Arcos and Nephis. You have cleared most of the tower. Uh where is it? I'm glad I put breakdancing into Tiberius's <laughs> yes, repertoire. That was amazing. He's the originator of it. Yeah, he the the breakdancing bard. There's nothing the, to do. There's nothing the to do in New Quiver Shank. Just get down on it. <laughs> Pushkin's just there, like, what are you doing? It'll be big. You will see. <laughs> Come on, Pushkin, get with it. I love it. So it says I get alertness. What is alertness? I think that is upgrading your um. Perception, the next level. Yeah, I think level three is a level for everyone where you get a skill upgrade. Oh, I might be going crazy. Alertness. There we go. Experience has made you increasingly aware that only you react more quickly to danger. Proficiency yeah. rank perception increases to expert. Yeah. Oh, so you yeah. also get to increase one of your chosen skills to expert as well. So whatever you think your character would do. Um, you'll have some specific class stuff. Spellcasters get second level spells. Pretty big deal. Um, and you get a general feat. Which, general feats are a really nice way to like shore up things in your character. Skilling. They're quite powerful. So I get um, to pick like... one, one skill to go into expert, you say? Yes. Interesting. Rogues That's get cool. a skill increase literally every level. It's <laughs> mental. Oops. 53 health. Oh, health. 53! <laughs> and you could pick a general feat and take the toughness one. 
with a plus one HP for each level. Might as well get medicine, I think. Well, being HP hasn't been helping me that much, so... Well. That's true. It does also make your the DC of your recovery checks one lower. <laughs> your rank and fortitude status increases to expert One as well. lower. But yeah, there's lots of good general feats. Um, I know some popular ones are Fleet, gives you plus five feet to your movement. Die Hard, which Celia has in Lumen, so you only die at dying five. Um, and it makes you better at recovering from them, I believe. Oh no, it's just five. So two um, there's mm. loads, loads of different general feats. Assurance is a popular one as well. That allows you to just take 10 when you roll a certain skill instead of rolling for it. Really powerful. Battle medicine, really good. Bon Mot is one that Tiberius could definitely do. I know that's popular. You launch an insightful quip at a foe, distracting them. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, you can have a think. Thank you all very much. Except, so that was good. Thank you. If you have yeah. any questions about any anything with leveling up, let me know. We're all still learning, and we'll, we'll have a run through of what everyone's chosen uh, next session. And if anyone needs any more help uh, figuring it out. But yeah, well played. I was very. There were multiple paths that you could have gotten out of the um, the prison. Some of them were very not obvious and would have required a bit of a leap of um, logic. But I'm st when uh, Slug fed the the crab the um, the <laughs> glowing seed, I was like, well, the path has been chosen. We'll see what we'll see what comes of that. And now he's got leaves in his hand. Yeah, we'll see what comes of that. <laughs> no, I <next> don't. <laughs> it, was a, it was a pretty big deal. I'll say that much. Um, hmm. To pick spells, I don't know what spells are good. I'm not oh, yeah. I could pick in large. Do it on Lord. <laughs> That'd be cool. Oh my god, that'd be sick. Nah, not gonna do that. That doesn't feel very sin. What does oh, it do mechanically oh. anyway? It's funny. It's actually kind of bad but good. Target's, target grows to size large. Creature is clumsy one. Clumsy, I think, is um, minuses to your deck skills, so it's not a big deal. Um. Uh, your reach increases by 5 feet, so you'd have a 10 feet melee reach. Nice. Um, and you gain a flat plus 2 bonus to melee damage. Yeah. Extra is... range. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and at higher levels, they you can make them even bigger. Grow size to huge. Damage bonus is 4. Reach increases by 10 feet. And at level, if you heighten it to level six, you can apply it to ten people at once. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Right. Well, I'm going to head off. Thank you all very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well played. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.